and welcome to another episode of the Streaming Evil Live Show. I guess that's what this is. We're also live on TikTok right now, but we're not going to be paying attention to TikTok. We're paying attention over here. And so if you see me turn my head randomly, that is why. I'm still trying to figure out TikTok live streaming, how that all works. All these all these bit bops and TikToks and you know IGs and 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 twits and whatnot. It's it's all such a confusing landscape. Um Tonight's show is going to get super duper nerdy. I hope you are prepared for the level of nerdiness that we are going to ascend to. You don't know who my special guest host is because um, I sort of buried it. This is a, uh, this channel is sponsored by RiotStickers.com. As I mention every time we go live, and from time to time, CEO of Riot Stickers, Sharpie Riot himself, um, just a champion and supporter of this channel. He printed up this beautiful, shiny, glorious banner that stands behind me. Uh, it He came up with an idea for a really good show. It's a topic that I didn't think of. It kind of falls into like the top five categories, that stuff that we like to do here on the channel. And I was just, I was actually like kind of, at first I was kind of like, yeah, I guess. And then, what's up, Big Bufa? How you doing? Welcome to tonight's uh, show. What's up, Winston Smith? We got Winston Smith in the house. How you doing, Winston? Winston, you liking those Stephen King things that uh, I, I saw you? You've been digging the Stephen King stuff. If you if you want to know more about that, become a, a a YouTube member or a Patreon. And and thank thank everyone for their support. All all, all of you guys. In any case, so. So Sharpie came up with this brilliant idea where um, he was like, I don't know. He came up with this idea. We're going to get into it. We're going to bring him out in just a second. But let's let's start really quickly. Um, I just want to say I got a, 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 a special package, care package, from our friend Kevin Vonsper. Um, he's actually live right now on his channel. And uh, you should go over there when, if he's still going after I'm done, you should go over there afterwards. Party jumps around, so subscribe to Kevin's channel. Kevin is a, a, a musician. In fact, he, he did some music. Uh, he, he scores music specifically uh, for something that I did very recently. And um, Kevin's a musician. He sent me the CD. So we're going to open that up in a second. But. But before anything else, let's bring him out of the digital green room. Uh, our good friend, uh, Sharpie Mother Effing. Oh, I almost said it. I almost said it, but I didn't. Sharpie Riot. Oh, yeah. Hey, now. Hey, it's going to be hard for me to watch it. <laughs> What's, What's up? up? Hey. How you doing? I'm doing it, man. <laughs> He's doing it, man. He's doing it. Uh, Big Bufa says, this is my first live show. Saw your videos on my recommendation and got hooked. Ha ha. Thanks for getting me into the Misfits. And it's fun wow. learning about them. Wow. Hey, Big Big Bufa Tofu. I love your name. Hey, well, man. we're glad to have you here. Thank you for, for joining us live. We go live often. There's always a conversation going on in the chat and we always look at the messages, unless it's like a really in-depth interview sort of situation. So welcome to the channel. Yeah, that's awesome too, man. Like, you know, for people like us that have been doing it for a while, like it's just yeah. old hat. But think about all the stuff you've learned over the years. Like, right, man, there's so much cool stuff you're going to learn about the band. And for a band to ha have so much history and so much cool oh, stuff. So much like, history. You're in for it, Big Bufa. Yeah, <laughs> rad. All right, let's open this up real quick before we keep going. All right, so we got a special care package from our friend Kevin here. I'm turning it around. I want anybody to see my top secret information. And Kevin, much like me, he has reused this mailer. I always save my mailers because it's really good, too. Ah, yes, Winston Smith is loving the Stephen King episodes. We are reading an out-of-print Stephen King book. You can't, um, uh, you can know it, it, it he purposely let it go out of print for very controversial reasons. That's all I'm going to say. If your, if your interest is peaked, check out the Patreon or become a YouTube member, whichever. Let's see what, let's see what Kevin, oh my God, goodness. Whoa. Look at all this stuff. This is from Kevin. As I said, you got to check out Bonsper. He sent me 
Wow. He said, so Kevin, Kevin loves doing, I don't know if you can see it very well. He's, he's put, he's done his own artistry here. He's done, he, he, no two album covers are alike. And yeah, that's really special. Thank you, Kevin, for these. You can check out Kevin's music and look, he sent some beautiful stickers that you printed up. I'm guessing these are the, um, yeah, the life the and ones. slime. These are the life and slime stickers. So these are riot stickers that that were printed. And if you want to learn more about, well, we're going to talk a little bit about riot stickers later during the commercial break. But boy, do we have a crazy deal! I mean, I mean, Sharpie Riot, he's crazy to be doing the deal that he's doing here on this channel. It's it's nuts. Uh, we did get a donation from someone. It's not showing oh, nice. me who did the donation, but I just want to say thank you. I'll be able to check. It will be able to show me um, when I go to the thing. I can't see it, but whoever did it, thank you so much for donating. Big shout out to our benefactor. We'll find out. We'll, we'll shout you out for sure. It just doesn't, the uh, third party software doesn't show it to me. John Bullet. Is it John Bullet? Is that what you're seeing? Yeah. It's John Bullet. John, thank you so, uh, John, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for uh, uh, making yourself known. We really do appreciate um, the contributions here. They go towards fixing this busted ass keyboard. Oh, I said a bad word. This busted keyboard I have. Uh, so that's good. That that is that is all good and grand. Thank you, John Bullet. Okay. All right. Now, before we even dive into our our topic du jour, we need to do something very important. We need to play the theme song. Now, here's the thing. Rue Morg, one of our you know most dedicated listeners, he is not into the new. He does. He's not into like the new Misfits stuff. He likes the old Misfits stuff. So he might. I don't even know if he'll check it, check out the show. He might not. Might not interest him. But this one, whether he watches this or not, this one goes out to Rue Morg because I know how much he likes this intro. Jeff is gonna talk about the Misfits right now. He's a nerd about this stuff, obsessed anyhow. Jeff never shuts his face, always needs to talk. My eyes show some way, he went out for a walk. Do you think that he cares? He doesn't care. He's out in the ranch. Backstage. Okay, now the show can officially, officially begin because we have done the theme song here. Okay, um, where to begin? So, at the last year, uh, in talking with uh, Sharpie Riot here, we, uh, I said, I said, Sharpie, you know, we should do, we got to do, you know, a, a Riot Sticker show, you know. And uh, for that, you know, I mean, what do you want to do? You want to do something like anything? It was not necessarily going to miss it. And this was uh, Sharpie's idea. He he was like, this yeah, I didn't want to talk about the stickers. I wanted to talk about the misfits. Right, right. Of course. Well, I mean, <laughs> not just riot, not even just riot stickers. I mean, it would just be like a riot stickers, like like sh uh, uh, I mean, the whole yeah, yeah. channel is sponsored, but. We could have been talking about anything that you wanted or something that, that particularly interested you, but you wanted to talk about the Misfits. Particularly, you wanted to talk about a very uh, specific time period. And you know what? Since you came up with the idea, why don't you explain it from your POV and then I will, uh, I'll, I'll chime in there. So you take the floor uh, and break down what it is that, that we do it. Sure. So like Jeff said, you know, he asked me about doing a show and I was just, you know, trying to think of something. I, I wanted to talk about the misfits um, and Jeff's covered so much over the years. And it's like, where, what can you do that Jeff hasn't covered? <laughs> no, I, no. And I, and I watch, I watch so much of the, the shows that Jeff does, but I don't get them all, you know? And I know it gets talked about here and there, just like kind of snippets of, of when the, 95 graves resurrection era kind of like came to a crash you know in in 2000 um but maybe it doesn't get enough attention what happened at that time and you know uh 
I've been a Misfits fan for a long time, but I was I was a big Misfits fan right at that time and also playing in, in horror punk bands. And, um, you know, it was like, what happened that they didn't get a new singer? And I just wanted to explore that. Like, what could have happened? What could have been? Um, so I brought it to Jeff. I said, hey, let, let's talk about, like, you know, who could have been a fitting a lead vocalist when um, Graves and Chud jumped ship in 2000. Um, and so, you know, we, we talked about, you know, some limitations, obviously, like Glenn Danzig is off the table. We couldn't put him on our lists, you know. Right. Um, and right. also it had to be it had to be people that could have done it at that time. So, you know, we, we can't talk right. about, you know, someone that would have been, you know, way too before then or or after that time too so we both uh you know had our studying to do but you know it's definitely a an interesting conversation and um another point of that at that time i actually had tickets for a misfit show um you know a month prior to to graves and chud leaving the band and um I had tickets to a show that was about a week after they, they quit. And this was like internet days where there was, you know, some chatter going on, but not, uh, you know, now if someone quit a band, like you would know in five minutes and you would be positive that the news is out there, but this was a time when maybe you didn't quite know. So, you know, I, we had tickets for the show and we were hearing Graves and Chud quit the band and we went to the show and, and we thought that was true. And when we got to the show, that's what everyone was talking about. But we kind of didn't know for real until the band walked out on the stage. So it was pretty cool to, to be at a show waiting for the band that you came to see. Right. And kind of be like, hey, who, like who's the singer. And of course, as the show is going on, like people are talking, people that got to go backstage. So the rumors are flying, but again, like all rumors, you know, and they became more and more confirmed as the night went on, but it was still like, you know, not a hundred percent there yet. And you, and you kind of didn't know. So it was just a really cool, cool thing. Like, you know, it's awesome that we get to know everything now, but sometimes it's kind of cool when you don't get to know everything, you know? Sure. Now, what do we have? I've pulled this up. These are never before seen photos taken by Sharpie Riot. He had one of those back in the day before you even had a digital camera. You had some you had a disposable camera. Was, you had rolls of film and you couldn't even see what your picture was taking. You just hope that it came out and you had to charge up the flash. Right. Isn't that what this was? It was a little disposable camera. Uh, it was like, it wasn't a disposable, but yeah, it was like a point and shoot that you put film rolls in. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. And I think I took like two um, 24 exposure rolls. So I had 48 photos to take. Um, so I got 48 photos. I took a bunch of like opening bands at the time and, and uh, it was like Circle Snakes and I think Murphy's Law were with them. Um, so, you know, a bunch right. of exposures went to that. Right. Um, but, but the really, and man, this venue, it was, it was Ziggy's in Winston Salem, North Carolina. And, uh, the venue was really cool. The, this, there was like kind of four tiers of the venue and the stage was the lowest, uh, tier. Huh. So the band was, the band was the lowest tier. And then there was kind of like these arching tiers that went up from that um, probably like every, you know, 15 feet. So every 15 feet, it went up, you know, maybe like a foot and a half. Um, so if you were in the back of the room, you were, you know, five feet above the people in the front. But when you look at these photos, you'll see like, I'm, I'm right in the front, I'm on the first tier, but you can oh, see yeah. that I, that I am actually like a little bit higher than the band. Um, right. So, so it's you don't like get an amphitheater basically. Yeah, it, it, but it was standing though. It was standing room, right? Um, and I, I was right up against. Oil's makeup is rubbing off. It looks like on this one. Yeah, but I, yeah, I was right up against the 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 guardrail in front of Doyle. Got I had bruised ribs the next day. Oi. 
from everyone uh, smashing in the back of me. And normally, I back then I was, you know, uh, uh, someone that would have been in the pit. But at that show, right. I was I was pretty focused in to watching the band. So here you have look look at so here's what's interesting about the photos that Sharpie has taken. I mean, this is this is literally um, this is about nine days. This is nine days after Graves and Chud walk off the the final. The final, yeah, this uh, is um, Joe. I think there's a date stamp on the bottom of the photos, and it says eleven it four. Which which eleven right. four they they played at a venue called Ziggy's by the Sea, right. which was in Wilmington, North Carolina, or Carolina Beach, North Carolina. Um, but this was actually on the the show date was November third. Um, but obviously, okay, they, so right, it was it was November third, and yes. look at. You, and you know this is such a this is a different Doyle here. He is not as uh, he's not as uh, he, he looks like he's carved out of granite now, but he's a little bit more I don't know doughy. Is doughy the right word? He's like <laughs> isn't that isn't that he's crazy? Still very back strong. Then, <laughs> yeah, back then, we, like everyone was thought he was jacked, and then you compare him to now, and he's not. <laughs> right. I mean, listen, he, I, I'm not saying he's like clearly the Hulk. He's he's the Hulk here, but like you know, still, it's like. It just in comparison, yeah, he's got those weird chainmail uh, boots on, and um, yeah, this is these are photos of a band in crisis because they're the drummer and singer walked off mid tour. Now they are scrambling the very next show. Now here's what I wanted to ask you about particularly, but before I ask you, th this is the photo. This photo and the next photo, I think, I found to be the most interesting of the photos you took, and that's. Um, that's oh my god da dagger love wow thank you so much for your contribution here all hail the dagger love thank you dagger that's Truly. awesome that is awesome that is greatly greatly appreciated thank you dagger i just saw that wow thank you that's um, awesome and 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 kudos to you Winston, I know you mentioned in the comments that you, uh, Winston's going to see Danzig sings Elvis in February. That's going to be a great. Oh, that's awesome! You got to leave it. You got to review it for us, Winston. Let us know how it is. And and again, thank you, Dagger. Truly. Um, but this this is a photo that I find interesting, and there is another photo that I find real, and this one I find interesting because who is this guy? Who is this guy, man? Like the, the drummer is. Um... It's the drummer from Murphy's Law. That's is that the goat? Yes. Oh my god, I didn't even recognize him. That is 100% because Murphy's oh, Law that's the it was the goat. I was like, yes, who the, the show... hell is this guy? I didn't recognize you know, like, he has hair. I didn't even recognize him. The show was Mur Murphy's Law. Well, right. And you know what? I don't remember the order. I think Murphy's Law went first and then Circle of Snakes um went second, which, you know, they were a little bit different style wise but they had a little bit more show stuff so i think the misfits put them before them yeah but um but yeah he he played and and then came back out and played with the misfits so that's good gotcha so that i mean that's really the beginning of how the goat started playing with the band. yeah they were just on tour together and they needed right. someone you know and he was there and sure sure i mean showed happens, stuff man. look at that there's this frankenstein guitar so, I mean, you really were up the close and personal. It's just such a, a, a tumultuous time for this uh, reformed band that had been, you know, doing remarkably well up. I mean, for the last five years and really sort of uh, reestablished themselves and, you know, gotten a whole bunch of new fans and sort of really like rise to, to ri rising upward, upward motion. Um you know, which generally, I mean, these guys, by the time they're reforming the Misfits, they're in their 30s, which is not to say, listen, it's not uh, it's not old by any means. But generally speaking, it's like, you know, they're playing with bands that are 10 years behind them in age in certain cases, Graves excluded. Uh, it's interesting. Um, and here's a photo. Here's a photo of, you know, of, and the other uh, interesting thing, you know, looking back at these now. When I went to that, I played, I was in a band at this time, but you know, I was, I was new to it and it, you know, it was just different. And yeah. now looking back on it with all the band stuff I did and, you know, 
people quitting the band and their shows booked and all that stuff, like that's stressful and it's hard. And, you know, I took my band seriously and, um, you know, those were hard obstacles. And I can't imagine for those guys, what they were doing in the middle of a tour to figure it out. I, you know, I remember being there that night at the show and, you know, Jerry was singing, which wasn't what we expected to see that night. Right. But, but, you know, they, they pulled it off and it worked. And, you know, I think the diehard fans, there were bummed. That's kind of the way it was. And sure. again, a lot of, a lot of people talking about like what was happening with the band, but you know, they had fun or at least looked like they had fun up there. And, you know, I can't imagine the turmoil those guys were going through, like before they got on the stage, after they got off the stage. And, you know, it's certainly something to, to, to praise that they stayed up there. I mean, of course, like in a lot of ways, they didn't have much of a choice, but some people would fall apart in that situation. Sure. And they certainly sure. didn't. And they went out there and did it. And, uh, you know, so so you look at these photos and, you know, if you didn't know the band or, you know, if you're someone that kind of only knows the Misfits from the time that Jerry's the singer, it looks like a Misfits show. Um, but to to realize what was happening at that time and that they pulled off this show, um, you know, it's kind of it's it's a pretty cool, really. You know, they have you know, and, it's funny. Uh, first of all, J, uh, uh, James Gruesome is in the house. So, hello, James. How are you? We're going to have James. Uh, James has to be on the show soon. We, we, we were, we've we texted about it. It's going to happen eventually. We're going to get James on here for, for, for some sort of top five thing. So, shout out to James. Um, but, so here's a, a couple interesting things. First of all, about what you're saying. You know, immediately after after they quit, after they walked off, they freaking um, they had they they were in Florida, so they had they had Joey Image come up and do a set. I mean, they were literally flying by the skin of their teeth, you know, trying to like stay on tour, trying to stay on track. And you know, when Tank, when we do the next installment of the of the of the Grim Tales with Jonathan Grimm, aka Tank. Who was there when that all happened? We will, you know, probably get some. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> we'll get some insight as to what that must have been like. So it's like here's a bit, and then here's the thing too. And this is this like is a the perfect segue into our discussion now that we've looked at these photos. Um, so to again paint a picture of what it is that we're doing, I I want to put it out there. I want to start off by saying, look, this is not. This is like a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about Jerry singing for whatever reason. I, you know, I used to care much more than I ever probably should have. Um, today, I don't. Today, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't care. You know, it's like whatever, man. Um, but I did sort of have like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I got a better insight into or sort of had like a startling realization one time when we were when we were, uh, I don't know, I was doing something and I was just thinking in my head and I talked about it with Tank too, you know, I mean, it's like this idea, it's like uh, from a practical standpoint, from a pragmatic standpoint, it makes sense in Jerry's head to be like, screw it. I don't need a new singer. I'm going to be the singer. That's one less person that we have to worry about for traveling. I don't have to worry about my lead singer not being able to get into Canada because he's got priors on his record. That's what was happening with Graves. I don't have to worry about anything. It's one, you know, it, it makes, it, it simplifies everything because here's the reality. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Because the reality is if, if Jerry really wanted to take over as singer, he could have done it a lot earlier. And the reality is he was, he was still looking for a front man to front the band, even after Graves started to falter, man. He he had he got Mike Hideous. Then he had Zoli from Ignite, which was part of the, you know, contention with Graves and par partially has to be why he walked off. You know, it's like, it's like Jerry is not trying to necessarily be the front, even though Jerry's calling the shots, no matter what, you know, whatever is going on business-wise or behind the scenes, from a presentation standpoint, Jerry's still going, I need a lead singer to front this band. It's not going to be me. And sure. finally, just like, you know what? I'm done with this. 
it's better if I just do it. And a lot of people. Well, really I don't angry. even know that he thought, I don't, I don't know if, I mean, I get what you're saying, but just to clarify, I don't even think that he thought that it's better that he right, does it. Right, right, right. It's just like, I hey, think he thought this. it's easier if I do Right, it. exactly. Um, and, exactly. I, and I get that. I mean, you know, when you're younger, you might say, hey, I'll take this job that I hate because I'm going to get paid more. But there right. comes a time when you say, hey, like, I'll do this other job and get paid less because it doesn't suck. And, right. you know, I think that's kind of what happened. Like you're saying, like, I don't want to deal with, like, I bring someone else in and I find out they're like on drugs or I find out they don't agree with me on these other topics that have nothing to do with the, to, to with the band or they can't go into Canada, whatever it is. He knew that he could count on himself and he did it even though he knew that it would sacrifice the quality of the band. I think he knew that, that he, and that it would sacrifice the quality of the band. And you know what? And you know what? Like, here's like the craziest, the craziest like thing is you have to think about it. What the, the craziest thing that you have to think about really too is that up until this point in the year 2000, when they walked off, Jerry in, at least from Jerry, from the Jerry only sort of point of view, maybe freaking he always had problems with lead singers. You know, if you ask Jerry, if you say, Hey, Jerry, has it, up until you started singing, well, you know, did you ever not have problems with he probably would be like, Yeah, I had problems with Glenn, at least at the end. I I started having problems with Glenn. And then I had problems with Mike Graves. And then mm -hmm. he would probably give you reasons why he had problems with Mike Hideous. And then he would go, I had problems with uh Zoli wasn't working out. So you know what? Sure. It's just easier for me to do the thing. And you know, um, Part of making this again, so so the idea here is again just to, to circle back. We're not here to like we're not here to like lament the fact that Jerry was the singer. We're here to sort of like sort of uh, sort of pick who we would if Jerry had said no. I need to keep the frontman aspect. I'm going to. I need another frontman. So if Jerry decided to get another frontman. We are going through selected people that selected musicians that we thought would be could have fit at that time. And here's the thing: I don't know about you, and I listen. I never do this when I do a top five. I'm so lazy that I'm I'm the hardest working lazy guy ever because I'm not going to ever put my my picks in order. I just grab five. But for Sharpie, and because of the show, and because Sharpie really felt passionately about it. I went the extra mile and I put <laughs> my picks in order. So these are my awesome. picks in order. And not only I felt that, like we had to. I felt like we had to. No, it's you're right. Like, you're right. You're right. It just ma it mattered so much because again, there's people that I think would have been good, but there's like maybe better than the other people, but then there's like a a, a huge flaw somewhere, you know, um, that makes well, it kind of not work in this just this one column. So I'll give you an example. Out. I'm going to give you an example of somebody. And by the way, I see there's lots of awesome comments. I'm just trying, like, if I if I acknowledge all of these comments, I see Eric and I see I see a bunch of people in there uh, weighing in and stuff. And I'm happy to see all of you. I'm 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 sort of gliding over comments right now because we want to keep the flow going and keep the show going, or else we'll get mucked out. But I see you. Keep talking. I love it. Um, fuck. What was I? Oh, here. Oh, crap. I cursed. Um, what's up, Angus? Angus is here. Angus, hello. Joining us two nights in a row, sir. Um, okay, no more comments. We're, we're done with the comments for now. Okay, we're focusing on the topic. Joey Ramone. Allegedly, Joey Ramone and Marky were, you know, there was discussions about having them permanently join the Misfits and that it would be this, this Misfits you know, this Misfits Ramones hybrid, which would have been absolutely zany. Now, why wouldn't I put Joey Ramone on my list? Because I tried to put people who I thought would actually work, that would actually work in the band. So that was my other criteria. It wasn't just picking someone who I thought was interesting. And I really tried. I really put so much thought into these picks. All of my reasoning as to why I picked them, like it's all sound. Uh, but that was a part of the thing. I was like, with the reality of 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 Jerry only trying to deal with jo uh, Joey Ramone's OCD because Joey suffered 
from OCD, man. You know, he 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 suffered from OCD, and it was very hard to tour with Joey Ramone. And I, if you read in Monty's book, Monty was on the show. He was on one of the early episodes of Pizza Bug. We talked about that. You know, those guys, they were dealing with his OCD. I don't know if that's something Jerry could have ever tolerated. So the idea of that, act, even though he was considered or it was considered or talked about in some level, and then Joey got very, you know, Joey got sick. Joey was sick and he, he injured himself and he, he died. But but I don't want, I'm like, hey, I'm not going to put that, that, that can't count because that's not realistic. That never would have worked. So it has to be at least my picks. I was like, this has to be something that works. I didn't hold Sharpie to that same standard. We didn't talk about that, but I just wanted to put that out there. That, that was an additional like, like layer that I was thinking about when I was coming up with my picks. Yeah. I mean, to me, there was a lot of columns, you know, um, not really one more important than the other. Um, but you know, a lot of them that, that mattered. Um, so I kind of had to rank those things and, and kind of come up with a total sure. of how much I thought the person would work, you know? Sure. Um, sure. You know, even something like Joe Ramon, like, you know, how much are you willing to let it turn into um, like a tribute band that isn't going to like, right. how much do we want? How much do we want new music? You know, how much do we want new music compared to how much do we want to just hear him play the hits? Right. Um, totally. That and, and I'm not saying one is necessarily more important than the other, but something but it, doesn't make it, it doesn't turn into the mystery. And that was the other thing, too. It's like. Like, here's the thing, and I'm not talking about, we could have a whole other conversation about, like, what kind, you know, it, it, th this goes into the thing of, like, oh, well, it still doesn't make it the Misfits because it's not, doesn't have Glenn in it. What what I was picking my picks for this band, it was for, very specifically, for this band. So the idea being that, yes, they could sing the Glenn songs, yes, they could sing the Misfits 95 songs, but it has to be a singer that can handle like all that stuff. Like it's not. And that is a whole other thought <laughs> that I had, you know, when, when, when Graves came into the band, okay. Graves had to be able to do at least somewhat, at least live that people yeah. would be okay with. He had to be able to do the, the Danzig stuff. Right. Sure. And then, and then he had to be able to work on new material. Well, right. If if you brought in someone else, this person has to be able to do Danzig, has to be able to do Graves, which are completely different, yeah. and do new material. So tricky, tricky, tricky uh, business. Yes, it's tricky business. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Before we before we dive into our picks, there's one other thing we need to discuss. You know, in addition to tricky business, we also need to talk about sticky business. And here's the thing. Here's the deal. At riotstickers.com, we have the, the, the proprietor, the CEO of riotstickers.com with us right here, powering this channel. Riotstickers.com, we have a very special promotion going on. You don't understand. I mean, I'm worried about Sharpie's mental health, that he came up with this promotion. He has to be crazy to do what he's doing. He is doing a special deal only available at riotstickers.com backslash yeah that's the from us bomb deal it's only available at riotstickers.com backslash from us where you can get uh a thousand stickers for 79 dollars that's seven cents per sticker do you know how insane that is seven cents per sticker those are three inch by three inch stickers let me tell you something the sticker that i'm holding in my hand this sticker is printed on vinyl okay it's printed on vinyl which makes it very, very weatherproof. I slap these things on around my town all the time, and I always go back to check on them to see how they're doing, and they, they're they holding up, man. They're holding up. They also have a UV coating on them, and you know what that does? It protects them from the sun. So you don't have to worry about sticking your stickers in the shade. You can stick your stickers in the sun or the shade. It doesn't matter. Um, so riotstickers.com. The, uh, the average sticker company that does outdoor stickers two to three years out in the sun, out in the elements – Ours are three to five. So pretty much double. It's double, man. It's double. And you know why? That's the that's the riot stickers guarantee right there. So riot stickers, I'm gonna do one of my favorite things to do when I'm plugging riot stickers. Boom! You got stickered right in the face. Right in the face. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Oh! All right, last time. All right, let's play our our less than Jake 
uh, singer inspired song. Who is it? Which guy from Less Than Jake did that song? It's the singer, guitar player. Well, I mean, they have it's the guitar player, but the guitar, guitar player, player and the bass player both they they share singing duties. So good point. Okay, so it's the singer. So I've been always saying that it's the singer of, of Less Than Jake. Okay, that makes sense. So let's One do that. Singers. Let's do that and we're gonna we're gonna pop right in. We make stickers, banners and buttons too, posters and promo cards. There's nothing we can't print for you from stage backdrops to bass drum heads. We can print on shirts, we can print on hats, we can print Yeah, baby, Riot Stickers, we are the mother effing bomb. We got biz. Thanks, well, thanks to John. John put a nice comment. Yeah, I was, I, I was that. just about to get to John's comment real quick. I was going to shout out a couple people before we start on our list. John says, I have been purchasing stickers, T-shirts, et cetera, for bands since the 80s, and Riot Stickers has the best quality pricing for merch ever, hands down. That's from John of doom from the band voice of doom you know it you know it biz Thanks, is man. here um i think we already said what's up to angus is here angus says how about riot sticker on each side of De jeff's sunglasses you got to make that happen i'm gonna i'm gonna tack them up and then i'll have blinders on the side we got our king is here uh eric of course eric used to always show up late to the show but he showed up relatively early we had james gruesome in the house we already shouted him out we have a newcomer, uh, Big Bufa Tofu. I love that name. And, uh, and of course, Dagger Love. We have Dagger Love with us. Always a good show with Dagger Love. And um, we're missing, we're missing uh, Room Morgue. Oh, and Tank. Uh, Tank from Energy is here as well. Or at least he was. I don't know if he still is. And um, I did say uh, Room uh, uh, um And Irving. Dagger, this guy is a good artist, this Irving guy. I've seen his art. He does good stuff. Sorry. Dagger Love did a did a donation. Someone else did too. I can't remember near the beginning that one that we didn't know who it was at first. Yeah. But uh I did I did put out there anyone that donates the the From Us show today, I'll match the bright stickers will That's match you. very generous of you, Charlie. So let's tally Thank it you. up. Whatever it comes out to, <laughs> we'll double that. Okay. That's hey, uh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh yes, and to answer jdd i did not learn how to read i still struggle every day oh winston smith how could i forget winston smith too is here uh i, I struggle every day to read uh, especially when i'm doing the stephen king book which is currently available on the patreon should bring zombies on an episode they gotta say i'd love to talk to zom I remember make it that. happen irving make it happen let me hit, hit me up with the zombies guys i'd love to chat with them that would be great all right, without further ado, let's dive into our countdown. So for anybody who's just joining us, I'm just going to tack it. I'm just going to go do a, a very basic overview, super quick. I'm going to be very condensed. For anybody who's just joining us, we made our own top five lists of who we thought should have been the front man, front man or who could have been the front man after Graves and Chud walked off the tour. And so it's a replacement for Graves. Again, we are not slagging Jerry for being a singer. This is just about who could have carried the front man tradition. Uh, the rules are no Glenn Danzig, obviously, and that it had to be appropriate for the time period. That means that we couldn't pick someone who was like five years old at the time or somebody who was, you know, maybe 60 years old at the time, 65 years old. It had to be somebody who is appropriate or not for <laughs> the time, precisely. And thank you, John of Doom, much appreciated. A hippo swimming, thank you for the contribution, sir. And it's a yeah. hippo rotating. Matt. 
Yeah, sw swiveling around uh, with his arms flung up in the air. I love how it does the description on the third party <laughs> thing. Okay, that's nice. it. Enough preamble, guys. It's time to jump into I, this. I, but I, I, have, I, have, I have one more thing to do before we start. Go ahead. Along with everything you said. Yes, go ahead. Anyone that either of us name, like no one give us any crap for any of them. Like the, this is just like, it's, it's people that either of us believe in, but it's, it's ultimately for fun and it's our opinions and there's no nerd. reason to hate it's on either nerds. of us for our opinions. Yeah. So just have fun with it. Like don't hate on either of us for any. Yeah. I, I'm not, there's I, no yeah, reason like, for was, it. we have nothing to apologize for. This is a fun, nerdy game. And, the, and, you yeah. know, that was part of the challenging part. You know, it's funny. I was entered. I was, man, I was trying so hard to think out of the box. I wanted to shock people. I didn't want to go for the, e, you know, easy, easy to go to things. Maybe, maybe some of them are, but uh, I think, I think some of them might surprise. One of them, I think will definitely surprise people. In any case, we're going to start, we're going to let Sharpie go first. Sharpie, uh, okay. let me, so Sharpie and I worked out this very difficult system to do this because I'm <laughs> ridiculous. But it'll work. It's gonna work. Okay, so we're gonna Sharpie. I am pulling up. I'm. I don't know what Sharpie's picks are, and Sharpie doesn't know what mine are. No. Man. So we have overlap, and then so we do have backups in case we have overlap. But what? we're go we're going in order. So yeah, number five picks. So this is our like out of everyone that we picked. This is like the person that we liked as number five. But there's four right. people that we think are more appropriate. Right. And and just so you're aware. The runner-ups, like, like, yeah, as you said, the, we have we have runner-ups that can replace somebody. But right. the goal is the the goal is hopefully not to get knocked out. It's kind of like playing a game of horse. In any case, here is Sharpie's number five. I don't even know what it is. That's part of the fun. Let's yes. see what happens when we click on this image. Here we go. So number my number five, five is oh. Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you, dude, you did, you photoshopped these? That's amazing. Man, I wanted to give <laughs> the, the whole, I actually, I'm the one that said to Jeff that we should put images up of the person because oh I feel like God. us, I feel like us talking about it is one thing, but I feel like seeing the person while we talk about it is cool too. Oh, and so man. I went a little step further. I wanted to show them with Jerry and Doyle. I feel um, so. We can assume maybe oh. if the Misfits had gotten a new front man, that maybe Doyle would have stayed in the band. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm gonna assume he does. So I I showed my my singer picks with Jerry and Doyle. Um, but James my number Grusom, five pick, James Grusom, oh, nice. that Sharpie Riot. <laughs> Thank you, James, for your contribution. Much appreciated. Sorry, go ahead. I mean to cut you off. Please continue. No, that's fine. So my number five pick is Gerard Way, My Chemical Romance. Um, so again, uh, Graves and Chud left in October of 2000. Um, right. Gerard, Gerard Way had been playing in bands and things like that. Um, and he started My Chemical Romance in September of 2001. So about a year later, um, he actually grew up in Belleville, New Jersey, which is 10 miles from Lodi. 10 know. miles. He grew up 10 miles from Lodi and was a huge Misfits and Danzig fan growing up. So it's not, he wasn't someone that, like not even that he just knew who they were. He was a big fan. One of his, he uh, is quoted as saying that um, he loved bands like Queen were a huge influence, but he also liked Black Flag and the Misfits who would go crazy. So that's sort of where he's at with things, um, with what he ended up doing. Didn't they cut, um, they covered a Misfit song? Yeah, they did a few Misfits uh, stuff, a few old ones. I don't remember. I think, uh, I can't remember what song. I, I do not they know. They did one or two. I know very little about My Chemical Romance apart from the, the Black Parade because of Kevin Smith, who I listened to his podcast and he he would he had Gerald Way on and was gushing about the song. He's a comic book guy too. I know that. You, yeah, you should give him a little bit more listen. Um, I think for people our age, maybe they came out at a time where you were kind of like done listening to the new stuff that came out, and they came out in a time where like I guess the closest thing to to music that made it bigger that 
had any roots of punk rock was labeled emo and and you said well i don't want to like anything that's that but um right yeah it was like, very uncool to like emo in the early yeah. 2000s if you liked emo that was you know that was kind of uh it, it could be considered embarrassing could be but listen yeah. you don't have to yuck on someone else's yums and okay so it was the it was astro zombies by the way that's what it was yeah and I just have to quickly note, um, for no other reason, and we can't keep doing this, guys, because only because uh, we'll just be here all night. But I have to note that Angus has brought up one of my favorite bands that I don't talk about enough on here called The Mummies. They're a garage punk band. And he's talking about Trent, the the lead singer organist. He He's an organ player. And um, while I don't think that personally would work, I love that. Angus has brought up the mummies and knows what's up. And that is a, that is a conversation for another day, but just, a, but friggin' yeah, friggin' love the mummies. They are amazing. Um, but yeah, man, okay. any, like a guy, a guy that would have been really young at the time. And actually like one of the reasons I put him Mold. as low as I did Mold. is I think maybe, I think maybe he would have been not ready. Um, and I think like when Graves came in, maybe he wasn't ready, but they were kind of at a time where they could really, uh, they wanted like someone work, they could work. work with him and nurture him. But maybe, um, in 2000 or 2001, it would have been needed. They would have needed someone who could step in really quick and start touring. So yeah. he, he dropped down my list quite a bit because of that, because maybe it would have sure. taken, you know, uh, months, 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 or a year to kind of get him up to speed to where he'd need to be. Um, but again, My Chemical Romance kind of hit big in 2002. So he wasn't right. that far off time-wise. Um, and clearly, go back and look at their catalog, stuff he even did solo-wise. Um, huge horror influence. Amazing songwriter. Amazing lyrics. Um, and it definitely the vocal it, range it work. To, do, it could work. to do the stuff. It so. could work. I, I'll give it to you. It could work. Um, that was good. That was good. All right. For my number five, uh, mm -hmm. I was, you know, at first I was like, wait a minute. When, when did this guy, when did this guy start uh, professionally making music? And I figured it out. Um, for my number five, uh, you know, I tried to think of guys particularly also who had the, the uh, capacity for melodic vocals. I mean, I feel like it's a very, you need to be able to have melodic vocals if you are mm -hmm. going to be fronting the any iteration of this band, whether you know this Jerry's band or whatnot, and so the guy I picked for my number five pick was none other than drum roll. Brrr, here it comes, Nick Thirteen from the band Tiger Army. Um, Nick has so Nick is you know he's more the, the Tiger Army is. You know, I guess they'd be way more considered their psychobilly, but you know, they they overlap in the you know punk underground punk, whatever you know revival of punk, third wave of punk, whatever you want to call it. Um, they they are firmly etched in in that echelon. He covered American Nightmare on his demo that when they got signed to Hellcat Records yes. in '96. I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm not a big Tiger Army fan. I really love that song Incorporal, Incorporeal, I think it's called, which which actually I think they did that for Nitro Records, uh, which is the mm -hmm. guy from the Offsprings label, uh, whatever. The, oh, that had London May. That was when London May was drumming for them, London May from Sam Hain. Um, I think I think Nick has it, man. He's And he's just kind of like, I think he could drop the guitar I think he could grab the mic. He could definitely get throaty and aggressive with mm -hmm. some 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 Glenn Danzig vocals, and you know, push comes to shove. Although I don't think you know, part of the problem here is that some of these guys they would never do this. They would never want to play for Jerry's Misfits. They would only want they would you know they're 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 gi gi anyone who's diehard Glenn Danzig fan they're not going to want to play for Jerry's Misfits possibly. Um, or, or it's possible and, and you know i toyed with that too some of the people that i picked i i, I kind of thought the same thing but you know um a lot of these guys do like the band a lot and 
you know, they're also they're 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 artists and musicians, and it's their livelihood. So right. you kind of don't know what they do if 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 brought to that um, if if that scenario is brought to them. You know, I mean that it's it's a good it's a good gig. <laughs> right. So so you know, like yeah, I, I could just totally I could see him singing the grave stuff. I could easily see Nick singing circles mm -hmm. around the grave stuff and he would be able to do the Danzig stuff. And, you know, he is, you know, he's a professional driven musician. I feel like he, you know, and the, the problem with, with, with Nick 13, the reason why he is so low on my list is that, you know, Nick is like the front man mastermind, you know, sort of leader of his band. And so it's hard to see Nick stepping into like a spot where he's behind Jerry only who is calling the shots. And so I don't know how long, maybe if they did it, it, it would work for an album. You know, Nick is a writer and, you know, probably could write some really great material for Jerry's band. You know, um, I don't know if it would gel well with Doyle's playing. That's a whole other conversation to be had, but I think Nick would, would, could work so he's my number five and that's a valid point too because that was an important decision in people i picked like you know i feel like jerry and doyle can take songs that were kind of like written the bare bones demos of them and kind of make them misfit songs and better but i feel like they need a songwriter you know um sure. so that was an important part of people that i picked people that were songwriters not just singers yeah so yeah for sure for sure um, okay, let's go to your, we're just going to have to do it like this guy. This is how we're doing it. It's, it's working. Okay. It's, yeah, you know, I, I gotta like get the, uh, I have to share individual screens. This is why I miss StreamYard sometimes because it was just so effortless to go on the internet with StreamYard. I never had these problems that I have with. Nolan. I liked your pick too. And I, he didn't make my list, but it was someone that I certainly. Oh, it crossed your mind though. Interesting. Not even crossed my mind. Like I definitely put in some effort thinking about it. Yep. Word, word. Um, okay, number four. I have no idea who this is going to be. And you know, again, I'm I'm even more ecstatic to see your picks because you went to the trouble of Photoshop. I feel so <laughs> foolish. I should have done the same thing. I feel foolish that I did it. Let's see who it is. Uh, is that? Let me see if you know. Let me see if you know who it is before I say. Uh... Let's see if anyone in the chat knows who it is. That is, oh, that is the American werewolf guy. No. Let's That's see if not. anyone in the chat know who this is. Let's see. That's not the dude from American Werewolves? No. That's not Evil Presley, is it? Nope. That's, I don't know. I'll give, who it, I'll give five more seconds. And then Wait I'll a tell. minute. Did you put that crossbow Van... shirt? No, it was on there. Get Alex out of here, Van really? Halen. I Alex, don't know who Alex Van Halen and is Alex Van like, Halen Al, is. That like from of of the band Van Halen? I don't know. No, I, uh, I have no. Okay, idea so no one knows. So I, I thought this was the American Werewolves guy because I always see he always has like the the Captain Harlock thing. That's funny. So this is one I put on there that I thought this very well could happen. Um, that you know it might be long enough ago. That there wouldn't be, uh, that that people might not recognize oh, who it is. Plan no. Nine. This is the Plan Nine guy. Ah, uh, you got it. Damn. He, he passed away. This guy it is. passed away. Yeah. This guy his uh, he went by the name of Baron Blood. Right. From the band Plan Nine. His name was Aaron Fuller. Mm. Um, and Plan Nine started out as a Misfits tribute band. Right. Um, and they did they did really well. Uh, Danzig saw them play. Jerry saw them play. Jerry yeah. uh, talked on their first album they put out, and they decided to to turn into an original band. Um, wow. But I picked Aaron Fuller. Um, they get they started. Let's see, Plan Nine uh, started and uh, actively playing in Plan Nine in two thousand. Okay. Um, All right. Listen, that Metallica would that go works. see him play, but so so this is an interesting one. Go check him out. And they the band still actually 
functions. Unfortunately, Aaron Fuller, the person you see in this photo, died in 2008. Yeah, that's sad. Um, so, but he was the original singer. So you have to yeah, go they did, check they out had music videos. They had music videos. Yeah, they had some music videos, and they released an album called Eight Hits from Hell in 2004, where they did right um, some some. I think they did uh, Archangel, uh, maybe some other Misfits covers. Um, right. But the interesting thing about him is he does a Glenn Danzig. Uh, impersonation voice, which I'm typically not like a huge fan of. Um, but this was a guy that I heard do it, that it, it, it felt really like genuine and not forced. Normally I can, mm. I can, when, even when someone does a good Danzig voice, I can tell that they're forcing their voice to change, to set, to try to sound like Glenn. Um, and I feel like this guy Although we know he's trying to sound like Glenn, and I don't. It feels really natural to me, and I always really liked his voice. Um, and I think that if the Misfits would have tried to have someone that sounded like Glenn when they came back in '95, I think that that would have been a hundred percent off the table. No one would have accepted it, and it would have been yeah. bad. But I think maybe in 2001, after the Graves era, I think if someone would have came in that did sound like Glenn, not only do I think people would have been accepting of it, it might have been welcomed. Interesting. Um, very, very interesting. A after that, after that gap. So um so I picked him as my number four. Um one thing that dropped him down my list. I was not expecting that. Okay. You 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 were yeah this was this was twice now. This was pulling back really far in the vault. And one thing that dropped him down my list further than where I may have put him was I looked back at Plan 9 um, when they did do original music, which they have original songs and they're really <clears> good. <throat> and like, I don't know if you distorted the sound quality and I told you it was like some old Glenn stuff. Some people might believe it. Um, but yeah. I looked at who the songwriters were and it seemed he only was a co-writer on one of the songs. So it seemed like the guitar player and the bass player were the songwriters. Um, and I feel like whoever could have been the singer in 2001, we would have wanted someone that could write. And it seems like, and maybe he could, and he just didn't have the opportunity with plan nine, but I didn't see any evidence, evidence of him being a songwriter. So it dropped him down my list. Um, James Grusom says, didn't Plan 9 have a CD called Man Made Monster or was that another band? It's Man Made Monster was, I think, man, I don't remember what year, but that was the album they put out that was, it was originals. And okay, it, for, so that for was people, all originals, yeah. It was all originals. And if, you know, if you like the old Glenn Misfits, which we all do, go listen to that. And I feel like it's, in my opinion, the closest peak that maybe we can hear of what some stuff might have sounded like around the early 2000s of of Glenn Danzig Misfit songs, maybe. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. I actually do. Okay. This is good because I actually do have <laughs> a photo. One of my photos does have Glenn. I mean, uh, Jerry and uh doyle in it um but because they took a photo with jerry and doyle uh this photo is actually i guess amongst you know fans of this stuff of these bands this is actually a very well-known photo it's circulated on the internet for damn near 20 years and uh the, my pick is actually often mistaken for another lead singer and uh, I just, I think this is like a go-to. This is a really good fit. And it's low on my, it's, it's only, it's at number four and not higher. Because the reality is, is out of all the, the picks, this one might actually have like worked very long term. Um, but I know your pick, by the way. No, you don't. Yeah, hundred <laughs> oh, yeah, percent. I know who your pick. Yeah, is. you know. Oh, I yeah, hundred percent. You do. Yeah, of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Of course you would. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is all right. So, what am I burying the lead for? Let's just let's just go to it. Uh, for my number four pick, here is who I have selected. 
boom. Did you know that this was the pick? And this I did a hundred percent. So it's my it's my favorite pick of Jerry ever, for sure. It, it's a it's a glorious pick for a lot of reasons. So this is really funny because uh first of all, my my number four pick is Evil Presley from the band The Independence. This is a pre-independence Evil Presley. So before he started the band, he was a huge he was a big Misfits fan, and obviously he's a Sam Hain fan. He's wearing a Sam Hain shirt. This is late 80s during uh Christ the Conqueror era, and he has taken a picture with Jerry and Doyle. I don't know the, the story behind this photo, but people right, exactly. Mo the Great. That's right. It's Mo the Great, not Jerry only at this time. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Um I don't know the, the, the origin behind this photo, but this is an iconic photo, and everybody thinks that's actually Jeff Scott Soto. Yes. People always mistake evil, and evil knows this, and he thinks it's hilarious, or at least he used to think it was hilarious. Um, but, you know, they you know they started off the Independents, and the Independents were a beloved band of Joey Ramone. Joey Ramone discovered this band and actually became their manager. So they were managed by Joey Ramone himself, which maybe back then was like, I mean, that was like a cool thing. But like, when you think about it today, it's kind of legendary because it's like, damn, dude, you were, you were managed by friggin' lead singer of the Misfits. I mean, they knew Joey very, very well. Um, and you know, there, there was even, you know, uh, Joey even tried, Joey tried to get them to open for Danzig. He jo allegedly, um, I remember uh, Evil telling me a story about Joey talking to Danzig on the phone about negotiating, about trying to get him to to come on. Uh, and, you know, it's weird because the independents are kind of a ska band or they have a ska, you know, they have a ska influence on their sound. So that would have been really interesting had they opened for uh, Danzig. And, it, and and mind you, the Danzig we're talking about is, I, I believe, I don't know what when that phone call happened, but I believe that's like a Danzig 5, Danzig 6 right. Danzig, yeah. which that's a had weird, yeah, that's a weird combination to have the independence of ska band with, you know, um, you know, that. But at one point in time, evil was considered, or their, their, his name was thrown in the hat in some way, shape, or form for the missus. It might have been when they were just doing, an, maybe as nothing more than just an audition. But I do know that evil in some way, shape, or form, clearly he was acquainted at one point in time with Jerry and Doyle. Oh, this was like, you know, like I said, this is pre-independence evil, you know, meeting two members from one of his favorite bands. Um, and I could just, you know, I could see him. He would not sing. He would sing the, the, the he would handle the Danzig stuff fine in his own way. Uh, I don't, he, I don't know that again, another reason why he's a little bit low on my list is because maybe he wouldn't handle the graves material as well as say, I mean, really you could kind of almost have him, tied with Nick 13 in that sort of sense because I think Nick 13 would sing the <laughs> the graves the graves trail. We actually I did have Evil and um uh Willie who who both I, I did an interview with for my documentary project. They were on uh Rock and Roll Cooking with Sal B. So if you search on this channel you will find the episode called Evil Tequila where Evil was getting Sal B very drunk on uh Patron tequila, and it was very funny. Uh, he was just pouring shots down his throat, going good. And I, be know, I believe that episode gonna... is still up. Sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna say? It's interesting. You brought up like uh, about you know what would this person sound like doing Danzig stuff? What would this person sound like doing this? And it was interesting going through this because you know these people that you would think of and and imagine. You would have to do that. You would have to like think of what that person sounds like, what you know them to sing like, and then uh -huh. in your somewhere in your mind, you'd have to block everything out and think of like some Danzig songs and like picture their voice doing that. Sure. And then you'd have to cancel it all out and think of like some Graves era. And, and when you do the Danzig stuff, like you know, 
a little bit of each style that you have in there and then go to the grave stuff and like kind of pick, yeah, you know, some of the extreme style wise and try to pick, like think of what that person's voice sounds like doing those things. And it was, it was interesting. And some people that I maybe didn't think were good picks when I first thought of them, when I would hear them in my head doing these different styles, I would start to be like, no, that works. That works. It works really good, you know? Mm. And then some people that I thought were good, I'd be like, oh no, they, they can't, they can't do that. You know? So it was, it, it, it's a wide range. And uh, so it was neat kind of doing that exercise, I think, you know? For sure. Um, so I do feel good that I did at least get one pick with my singer with the, <laughs> with the two, <laughs> with uh, Jerry and Doyle. Um, okay. Uh, we're up to what is that? We're that was my number four. Now we're at your yes. number three. I I am excited to see what that is. Let's pull pull it up, Jeff. Man, no one would ever pick this one in a million million years, and this one came you, along hey, way late in the game. You are uh, so. you, you're impressing me thus far. I I am I'm I'm kind of blown away. I'm really happy that some of the more obvious ones have not made either one of our list yet. We'll see. That is yet to be determined, but um, I don't know. Okay. This is your number three. Oh, is that Mike Patton? No. Who is that? This is um, Whitfield Crane I from Ugly mean, Kid Joe. Okay. I've who never... also... Yeah, who sorry, also was the lead singer for Life of Agony for a year, which was oh. one of the things that that circled me back to him being a good pick. Um, if you just listen to Ugly Kid Joe, it might not work. Um, it sort of does. But, you know, they were like a specific genre at a specific time. He's known to be a really good vocalist, you know, but... Again, Ugly Kid Joe is like a very specific thing at a very specific time. But, um, you know, he's done a lot since then. And, you know, you can go listen to like Life of Agony uh, stuff. And, you know, when I really started thinking about him doing the band and, again, being able to do this spectrum from like Glenn Danzig to like the Michael Graves stuff, like who could handle all that and, you know, and do it to where, I mean, anyone, like anyone could go up and do any of those songs on a night and just kind of cruise through the song. But like, who can do those songs that are, that are a big deal that the crowd really is waiting for and do them to where everyone's like, man, that blew me away oh. from both of those eras. And I kind of just kept going back to him in a lot of ways because of the vocal range and vocal style. So if you go listen to different bands he did over the years, um, you know, you kind of start to see that he did ugly kid Joe, which was his most successful thing from 87 to 97. I got it. I, I know nothing about this dude. I'm going to have to look into this. He was the lead know. singer of life of agony from, he basically did like one big tour with them, but it was 89, right. 99. So he wow. was just coming off that. Um, and then kind of after that, he did a band called Medication, which was kind of like uh, sort of a super group of some some like, you know, you know, radio metal band wow. type people. Um, but it never really took off. They didn't do a lot. Um, so he was kind of out there and he had and he had stepped in to do Life of Agony. So we know that he was willing to step into another band. Right. Uh, so right. so I feel like that's important. If you are going to get someone that maybe had some bigger fame prior, they might be like, well, I'm not going to go be the front man for some other band. But he had already done it. Um, so we know he's willing to do that. Hmm. Um, now, you blow my mind. Now, I don't know that he would have been interested in the Misfits gig. He was really tight with Lemmy um from motorhead but he definitely like completely stayed on the metal side of things so um i don't know how much uh, i actually went and even looked at his facebook page he did follow like bad religion 
um, and a few Bad Brains, a few other punk bands. So there's definitely like a little bit of punk rock influence like in him that he that he that he likes some of those bands. Um, but I don't think he's like big time from a punk background. I think it's definitely more metal, like Judas Priest, that kind of stuff was his biggest influences to get into music. Um, but if you go listen to his vocal range, I think vocally to do everything, I almost have put him at the top of my list. Wow. Wow. I mean, I'm speechless right now. I'm like, I, I, I thought you were going to like give me you're going to give me, you know, all sorts of uh, really like like paint by number answers, but you have really thought outside of the box. I'm like, I'm blown away. I got to listen to this guy sing now to like really, you know, uh, sort of put it through. My and I, you know, but. even other things I considered, because again, we've talked about how Jerry was like, well, I'll just be the singer because I don't want to deal with stuff, you know? Right. And so, you know, I even looked at people's age. Whitfield Crane would have been 33 years old in 2001. So, like, you know, it's not a kid. You're not bringing in a kid. Well, he's, You're he's willing in a to step in, but you said, as as you said, and that that's an important factor when when thinking about this stuff. It's like, would this guy step into the position? He's already stepped in for sure. Life of Agony. If you're not going to mm -hmm. be young, you got to be willing to to do the job, right? Right. You take sure. the job. So in this realm, from what you say, it sounds like he could take the job and it would work. So Yeah. So, and then, I mean, again, he was like good friends with Lemmy and all these other guys. Right. So even from Jerry's standpoint to say, hey, we're bringing in a, an ugly kid. Joe had like mainstream success. Right. Um, in the, in, in the like early nineties. So, you know, from Jerry's standpoint. Of, of wanting to get bigger. Hey, we're bringing in a guy that has had mainstream success. Right. Like he's, radio. He, can, he can bring, we can, we can open up to his audience. Yeah. I mean, the guy's hanging out with Lemmy and guys from Metallica and all this stuff. So like this guy's going to bring us connections. Uh -huh. He has a, he has a really good voice and huge range. He's not like some kid that's going to be like screwing around. Right. You know, so there's a lot of things that really fit to me. And again, the vocal range is huge too, to me. So again, I re a really weird pick in the grand scheme of oh, things. Oh, you think but like, that's weird? Well, We're about to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Go for it, man. All right. You ready for this one? All right. This guy, yeah. I love, love this guy's band. Love him as a front man. He is absolute. He is a huge Misfits fan. He is a guy who is not he's not like into like horror stuff or he doesn't have any sort of horror image he comes from punk rock roots you know third wave punk rock whatever you want to call it 90s punk rock but he's got the chops man he's got a swagger and a confidence that could totally work um on stage playing for those guys and you know again going back to what we were just talking about it would be I don't think he would never leave his band, which you all know. He would never leave his band to be in the Misfits permanently or Jerry's Misfits permanently. But this is absolutely like, wow, what an opportunity. What a gig. I'm going to do this. Like, you know, hey, when, you know, we got to book our tours around the Misfits going on tour. Maybe, you, you know, even do both. Although to do singing, to do double duty singing on two tours, could you imagine like I just, I, I can't wait to see who you say because I have a few guesses. I want to hear I your even... guesses. Go ahead. No, 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 ahead, no, 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 no. Oh, come on! I'm so no. I'm now I'm curious. No, because what if that person's on your list later, or okay, like whatever, point, or point. what if they're on my list later? Uh, um, this, but I have a few guesses. This guy, I, I, I just I, I love this guy, and you know, part of the pro part of his problem, what we're, evil works because he evil Presley because he's a he's a tall guy. And he can kind of get away. He fits in because, you know, everything is is image, right? So he fits in. He would fit in. What's up, Godless? How are you? Um, he fits in with the frame with Jerry and uh, the towering of Jerry and Doyle, right? Um, this other guy, uh, uh, Nick 13 is short, but Nick 13, he's kind of got like almost like he could almost kind of have like a bulldog thing going if he really wanted to. 
you know, he kind of, he's like a stocky kind of guy, kind of has like the, the Glenn frame. So, so I could see Nick 13 working in that kind of way. This guy, I think he's a tall guy, but he's skinny. He's really skinny. I mean, and, and that would probably be a point of contention of like, uh, uh, hey, you got to go work out for the kids, for the kids. You got to work out, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Which apparently, like I've always heard was a huge Dave Vanian thing. Right, you know, that's right. That was apparently yeah. one of the that was one of the reasons why where Dave Vanian, who was who was open to the idea, and I, you know, he was open to the idea, but ultimately was like, I'm not going to start working out because this guy's go, hey, you got to work out every day, and it's just like, what? Um, yeah. The uh, my my pick, my pick, like I said, he could handle. I know he could handle the Danzig stuff because they covered a Danzig track for a tribute album. Uh, I think he could absolutely do such a great iteration of the Graves material. I would love to hear this guy tackle the Graves material. It would be very interesting to hear. Again, I think of him as more of like a punk guy. So the you know the new Misfits or whatever they they had, there's like there's some metal in there. Doyle's guitar is a metal guitar. It's like weird. Um, all right. Without further ado, here we go. By the way, I see everybody's picks. James, I see your pick. I see all your picks. I'm trying to avoid sharing them because, again, we don't want to accidentally um, uh, uh, give away uh, the potential, but we can go back to those. Here is my pick. Let's see if you know who this guy is. <laughs> is, that is that the Bouncing Souls? Yep. That's Greg. Yes. That is Boom. that is. That is Greg. Dude, I um, gave him a lot of consideration. Great pick. I love it. Really? Love I'm it. so happy. Oh, dude, oh, he would man. be he you know what? Yeah. One of the things that you mentioned talking about, I almost couldn't get over, and I hate to say it, but like how how small he is and just like the visual. That was one of the things that really knocked him down my list. Yeah, he, but he vocally, visual, oh man, yeah, vocally songwriting. So whoa. Yeah. He he would have yeah. been, and you know he did their cover of "Mommy, Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight" on on that Misfits tribute, Violent World Misfits tribute is stellar. The Bouncing Souls, yeah. um, the Bouncing Souls love the Misfits, and yep. uh, you know I interviewed his bandmates as well for my documentary project. I didn't get a chance to get Greg, but um, you know Greg Greg could handle it, man. He could handle it all. He could he could sing. He could probably sing. Um, the hell out of those songs, and it would be it would be good, man. It would be really, really good. I, I would really like ha uh, that. That would definitely work. And like I said, the Bouncing Souls are at like you know kind of the height of their powers around that time. You know, or they're about to be. You know, they're 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 putting out um, stellar records and whatnot. And I just like, man, I I, I could just totally imagine him being like, hey guys, like, this is a great <laughs> opportunity. Oh. Sing for Jerry Dude, and Doyle. What? Someone in the chat said I thought it was Chris what? Kattan. Someone in the chat said I thought it was Chris Kattan, and that's oh, so. Oh, funny. that's Adam. Adam <laughs> thought it was Chris Kattan. I, I could. I see what you. I night. see what you're saying. A little. No, slightly, I do too. That's so from funny. From the slight angle, though, Chris Kattan's much shorter. You know, I and again, I just I admire I admire Greg so. It does look much. like him. It that does look like so him. Funny. I will. I will. I will agree. But he doesn't for real. But in that photo, he does. For um, some weird reason. And I, I I think yes, Evil is a good singer. I, I, Evil Presley Amazing. is good. Um, Amazing. Amazing. But yeah. Uh, Greg just has a confidence, man. He's like he's so secure when he's on stage. I, I I just think he would, I just think he'd be great, man. I, I would just like to see what he would do at least. So he is kind of a wild card. At least you know Sharpie and I are thinking in the same. Sharpie's entertained the idea too, but um yeah, Gr Greg from the Bouncing Souls is my number three. I love uh, it. <laughs> I, I really funny. do love it. That is too funny. Um. All right, let's go to. Here we go. Oh, Someone just have said, another... "Have you ever heard Plan Nine, the Misfits tribute band?" Hey, um, not to be a Plan downer, Nine. But... We have heard them, and I actually put them on my list of the person that should have been the Misfits yes. singer. Yes, yes. If that's you rewind right, later, you can check it out. <laughs> um, James Grusom says, "Not to be a downer, but R.I.P. But they are awesome. Jay Briscoe. R.I.P. to Jay Briscoe, one of the best." tag team wrestlers and ROH legends. I don't know too much about 
wrestling, but um, I'm sorry to hear that uh, that that Jay has shuffled loose this mortal coil. And um, thank you for your 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 uh, your contribution, James. And we salute Jay Briscoe. Briscoe, am I pronouncing that right? Jay Briscoe on the show. We salute you. Jay and Briscoe. long live, long live Jay Briscoe. How about that? I like to say that's what I like to say now. I don't just say R.I.P. anymore. I also say I like to say long live. That's what they used to do back, like in like the, the Middle Ages. Long live, like like David Crosby just died today. Uh, another oh, huge loss for music. Yeah, he passed away. Long live, long live David Crosby uh, as well. All right, let's go on to your. This is your. Oh, we're at your number two. Number this is getting, two. This is getting exciting. This is getting exciting. Okay, so, hold on. yeah, keep go. Go ahead. Start. Start your. Start your. Uh, yeah. So, in some pick. ways, this is not my most creative pick or surprising pick. Maybe more like what you were originally saying, where it was like these are the picks we thought everyone would make. But I can't just not put someone on my list just because they're not a creative or surprising pick. Um, so my number two pick is... Wait, 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 wait. This is... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Mike Hideous at number Mike two. Hideous. Yeah. Okay. Man. I... You know, like... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. We obviously all got a taste of that. Got to see what it would have been like, sort of. Um, right. But we also all got to witness what he did prior to that um, and also what he did after that with music. And, you right. know, he uh, wrote really cool stuff. And maybe it, maybe it wasn't misfit stuff, but it was cool stuff. And I think that, you know, I don't know that Jerry and Doyle together can like write new songs, but I think they can take song ideas and make a misfit songs. and kind of listen to what Mike Hideous did before them and after them and, and think about like, what if you took those songs and like made the misfit songs and sure. man, I, like I, I want to hear that so bad. I think, I, that, I think that it could have been like more magical than any of the other stuff that we've talked about. Maybe I'd be wrong. Maybe it'd be a train wreck. I know there was a lot of other things going on with all that that could have been an issue and went in the way, but um, I don't. It, to me, it was just like you know we got a glimpse of that and it seemed so good. And I know that people gave him crap because like he didn't know words to the songs, but he really got thrown into it rather quickly. He knew the words to those songs. This guy was in training for that position from like a young right. teenager. It's not like he didn't know who this band was. He knew that band for years, and it was like either his favorite band or one of his favorite bands. So, you know, I, I'm going to completely dismiss any of those things and, you know, not worry about that. I think it was more like just that this happened so quickly, stress, whatever. But I just listened to the other stuff he did. Uh, you know, the confidence and presence he had and just how much he had been training for that spot his entire life. And I just don't know how you could have went wrong. So. Um, I listen, I, I do think that the three of them together, <clears throat> maybe with uh, Jerry as an arranger and, you know, Doyle coming, kind of doing coming up with riffs and uh, Mike writing lyrics and melodies and stuff. I think that all together, they probably would have put out some stellar material and I definitely, it would have been great to see. I, I agree with you on all those points. Uh, I very much flirted with putting Mike on my list. I ultimately kept him in my runner up because he sang for them already. And so I said, I can't include, I personally, it was just my personal preference. I personally chose not to include him because I, I just felt like, I, I just felt like, you know, I had to, I, I couldn't introduce that element, but if you knocked me out with one of my picks, I was going to insert yeah. my hideous, by the no, way. No, I get I, it. And, and I sorry, considered actually, I considered actually doing exactly what you did, but yeah. then I thought, well, what if you think the same thing as I do? And it would be, it would be, uh, it would be not right. If he wasn't yeah. on here, if we, if we both thought the same thing, we're like, Hey, he sang for the band for a while. I'm not going right. to put him on my list. And then we go through this list and he doesn't 
he's not on here. Then right. so so the fact that you kind of thought the same thing you did and you took him off for that reason and I left him on thinking that you may do that. I'm glad he's still on there because he deserves to be. And in my opinion, he deserves to be in the top two. So one thing to carry out, by the way, uh, Kevin, if you go to the beginning of this episode, we we unboxed your your album and your stickers. Thank you so much for the care package from Kevin who jumped in here. We spoke about him earlier. He's now in the chat. He had a show. And we have Jody Ramon is here. That's a man, Jody. How are you, man? Hope you're well. Jody Ramon is here. Yeah. Good to see you. We're, we're just, you know who we're missing? We're missing Rue Morgue. Where is Rue Morgue? We had Dagger showed up. John of Doom was here. Everybody's checking in. Angus. What about here. the hot tub guy? Hot Tub Rob. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah dude. Love Hot Tub Rob and his, and, yeah. and his buddy Bob. Those guys, too. Shout out to them. So many, so many uh, characters on the uh, in the Frumis chat. Okay, this guy, this guy didn't show up either. Oh, and Robbie Bloodshed too, of course. Yeah, um, come on, I wore his shirt and everything. You know, so so here's the thing about hideous. Like the reason why, the other reason why I didn't put him on my list is because ultimately I don't know that I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. It, like, I guess it would have worked out because. He really did do whatever they like. He was ready. He dropped everything to go sing for them. He cut his hair, like he he dived in. He was dedicated. He was incredibly dedicated. And ultimately, you know, the situation, you know, the way he, he was he was dealt a bad deal, and was used as a pawn, kind of. And if that had not happened, you know, or maybe if things had ended more amicably, or maybe not. Like, let's play that out. Like it's you know 2001, uh, Jerry is in a jam. He needs another singer again, and he goes back to he goes back to my kid. He's like, "Hey man, you want you want the gig? You want the spot? It's 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 open. Come come sing for us, you know." And then maybe it does work out. Maybe they do a Mike. You know, Hideous I know you talked to him. I've I've talked to him a little bit too, but I, I, you've talked to him a lot more, and you had him on the show. I had him on the I show for what, like three I, hours. Yeah, yeah, and I wonder what he would say now because I'm sure at one time it, his he would say no. He would probably say I'm no. Sh I'm sure at one time his answer would certainly be no, but and maybe his answer now would be no. Um, but you know, I wonder if he would like. Think about it. If I think if at that come, time, maybe at that time he would have done it. But I wonder what, like, I wonder what he would say now if he was like, if I was back in that time at that point and they came to me and said, hey, it's yours and we'll like, you know, uh, however, we're going to like promise you the spot for real this time. Like, I wonder like how he thinks he would answer it. Cause yeah, of course he was pissed at them. Um, I mean, so maybe right, rightfully so. You know, I would. Frankly, I mean, Doyle would not be down for it. Doyle would be like, I don't want this at all. Maybe it would cause Doyle to leave in the same way that he ended up leaving. So who knows? Maybe maybe it would not. Maybe it wouldn't roll. But if I was my kitty, I'd be like, look, here's the deal. We're doing, we're doing, ah, you know, Kevin, good. I, I just want to quickly put, point this out. I flirted so much the idea of having a female singer. And one I of my too. picks, one of my picks, well, should I save it to, oh, well, I'll, 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 I'm going to spoil this one. I was going to pick um, the, uh, the, the, the girl, I forget her name, from Guar to become the new Misfits uh, front, 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 front woman for, you know, that was going to be one of my picks. And I ultimately decided not to go with it because I just was thinking, how would that work with all the material? I don't know. Um, but, man, if I... Right. Sl Slimentra. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Sl Slimentra. Something like that. Uh, I thought that would have been a... That would have been... Ooh, good good call. Brody Dow, uh, Dahl, whatever, from... Uh, she Village. was on my... She's on my alternate list, by the way. Oh, she is? All right. We're, we're starting to spoil yeah. it. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, we we got to get stop. off there. We got to get off them. there. But Jody Ramone is saying that Riot Stickers is the bomb. We're going to highlight that. Okay, it's guys. Not. All right. All right. No, I got to, we got to get out of the comments because we're, we're losing focus. Um, if I was Mike Hideous, I'd be like, look, I need, I want to see a contract. 
I'm going to look over the contract. I'm going to have a lawyer look over the contract. And, and once I think the contract is signable, then I would do it. Otherwise I wouldn't, you know, just jump on. You know, the, the one he... thing about him that's interesting and, and kind of like maybe knock them out of the number one spot for me. I read his book um, and it's been, it's been several years since I read his book. Um, yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to quote anything from his, his book because I don't remember the order of everything, but you know, admittedly in his book, he talks about having addiction problems and like, of course that would be a huge problem to perform in that huge. band. Huge. So like, you know, again, like I, I took things like that into consideration. Like, do I, cause again, when we, when we're picking these people, even though we're saying like, would the, like they had to be right for that time. But we're still like I I picked Gerard Way. Well, no one knew who Gerard Way was in 2001. He didn't even right. wasn't even in a band for real. So we are looking at it from now of what these people did. So so some of these people that I knew ended up having like substance abuse problems through that time period, you know, they either may have got knocked off my list or definitely got knocked down. And I know with him, he admittedly had that. And I don't remember the time frame that he that he really struggled with that and that kind of stuff but you know it's something to certainly consider like maybe he wouldn't have been able to do it you know but i i just want to highlight real quick for another another contribution from james gruesome thank you so much and he says he said and i was trying to read i wasn't sure what he meant at first because i was trying to like interpret his comment and now i finally understand he says he's saying Mike Hideous is my name's dad. At first, I was like, "Is that a typo?" But what I think <laughs> he's trying to say is th that that Mike Hideous is the dad of 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 the nickname James Gruesome, like Hideous and Gruesome. Right. So I get he what picks he's Gruesome saying. because he heard right. Hideous, right? Yeah. So he credits him for his cool name, and also uh, James's wife is the very very talented, supremely talented. Uh, artist and tattoo artist Elizabeth Gruesome. The Gruesomes, two wonderful people that I wish lived closer because I just feel like we would just have so much fun. It's a shame they live so far away. She has a a she has started her own tattoo studio called Breathless Arts Tattoo Studio. Um, it's it's not easy to to do to start your own business. To be to do that, I mean, you listen. Look at you. You started your own business, man. It ain't easy to do, right? Like it's it's not 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 hard. And so, congratulations to Liz on her on her tattoo shop. Uh, go check out Liz Gruesome's. I don't know if she has an Instagram with all of her tattoo stuff. I'm, I'm sure she does. I actually hired Liz to do the poster art for my first feature length film, Romeo's Distress, because I just love. She's her amazing. Work. And she was like, I don't do posters. And I was like, or not, not, not like that. She was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could do a movie poster, something like that. She wasn't sure about it. I was like, oh, man, Liz, please. I like had to like talk her into it. And she, she took one look at like the crappy design. And she just, she just instantaneously, intuitively knew how to improve on it. And it's just like all the cover-ups she does. It's the same thing. So that's why. That's Another interesting side. thing about Liz is myself – and Liz and my wife and a, another friend of ours had a Misfits cover band called The Misfits with two S's. Right. And then a you, capital. You were in that and band I, when you opened for Blitzkid. Were you yeah. playing on the stage? I played. Yeah, I played guitar. I had a wig on because it was all. Shop. Yeah, it was all ladies and me. Right. Uh, oh my God. So you were there. Yeah. I think I were there that night. Yeah. Yeah. We had a Misfits tribute band. Yeah. Cover band, whatever you want to call it, called the Misfits with two S's and a capital F. But Liz, uh, James's wife, that has Breathless Arts Tattoo Studio, she was the singer. There you go. Her, Another her connection. Cover band. Mm -hmm. Um, Slimestra. That's the one I was really thinking of. Slimestra at from Guar would be my female. Mm. She would. I feel like she she could work if you were going to have. But you know, again, the problem is, I just feel like. It, 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 I don't know for those guys like they would they would never do it they just wouldn't do it they wouldn't have uh, i mean jerry did try to get and that's that's a topic for another day the the his the whatever happened to the she demons which was a sort of his version of the runaways that he tried to put together um i don't know but 
yeah, I don't know. I don't think it would work. That's why I kept it to, to guys, not to be sort of, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I mean, this channel's full of, you know, it's always guys, 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 guys. This is why I'm glad I had Aaron on yesterday. It was nice to have a female guest. We don't have too many female guests. It's good to have female guests. It's just, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's keep going. Let's keep talking. Okay, it's my turn. And just to chime in before you do your number two, we haven't had any. We haven't had any. Uh, re we haven't had any repeats yet. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? I, I am. I am amazed. I am amazed. Yeah, Are you ready for this? Cool. Oh wait, wait! I shouldn't have done it. I wanted to keep it a surprise. It's not gonna be a surprise. Here you go. Here's my number two, Chad Price from All. Okay, so for those of you who don't know who Chad Price is. So All is basically the descendants without Milo. Milo, mm -hmm. who is uh, very accomplished academically. He has got all these PhD degrees, much like Greg Graffin from uh, Bad Religion. Um, he, he uh, uh, sorry, when he left, the guys in Descendants, they kept playing as a band called All, which they which they took from, there's a Descendants album called All, and they have a character called All Roy, and this concept of All is, it's a very interesting story. You should go check that out. I won't get into the whole thing. Uh, Chad Price is actually the fourth singer in All. So they had three singers before Chad Price. They had um, the dude from Dag Nasty and Down by Life. I forget his name. Dave Smalley. Dave Smalley was the singer for All. They had Scott Reynolds. Uh, they had one other guy. I'm trying to remember his name. Wasn't there, there was a third guy? Or maybe Chad Price was the third guy. Maybe there was only three guys. In any case, Chad Price is the last singer. Chad Price was probably, I mean, he, he's he been there for all of their, um, I don't know, like all the classic, all the classic all albums, at least all the classic songs that I love mm -hmm. by all. You know, like The World's on Heroin and mm -hmm. um, uh, Problematic, just really great. All songs were sung by Chad. Chad has such, he has just pop. Anything that went on Punkorama. Right, anything, right. Anything that was on a Punkorama was Chad. And he's got such wonderful punk, pop punk sensibilities to him. I would just, I, he could totally do the dancing material. I would love, love, love to see him do Graves material because I feel like he would elevate it. I feel like he could elevate it, man. He's just, he would definitely do it. He would take the gig. He's, it's as, as you said before, this is not, he's not the original. He is the third or fourth in of the all singers. You know what I mean? So he's, he knows what it is to come into a band and sort mm -hmm. of, you know, make his mark. Could you imagine, could you imagine him making his mark on, on Jerry's Misfits after losing Graves? I think he could have ushered them into a whole, other kind of renaissance he has his punk rock chops he knows how to tour because all is a friggin' road band those guys just go out on the road and that's my one question to you maybe you know better than i do but uh, like i am thinking wouldn't have they still been very active at that time or no um maybe i'm wrong no that for sure they would have been active but like but like very active no oh like, maybe they, they, you're right maybe they would have been yeah, because the descendants, the descendants went away for a really long time. They came back in two thousand four. So actually, at this time, okay. So let's let's pretend in our alternate history world, this would have happened. This would have been like a three year stint, a, a three to four year stint before the descent. Oh no, that's not true because the descendants came back in two thousand four, which means that all would have been. Yeah, this would have been an active time for all. So maybe Chad Price is like he goes to Bill Stevenson and. And, um, and and the rest of the guys, and he's just like, look, you know, this is uh, this is a really cushy gig, or this is a good gig for me, you know, when we're not touring and all. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'm going to take it. Now, the only thing I couldn't imagine from Chad Price is Chad Price. You know, those guys are not theatrical. I don't see him, Chad Price, sort of playing the part and dressing the part. So that would be, that would definitely, but in terms of like, you know, working, I mean, look at him, he looks pretty buff there. I think that he sort of would tick all the boxes except for like the, uh, the fashion, 
the fashion so I did element. I did just look it up. It looks like they stopped like right in 2002. Um, so it's, it's feasible. It's feasible. So, but, it, but, you know, it could also mean that that last year, maybe they were kind of fizzled down and not doing as much. I don't right. know. We'd have to, we'd have to look to see what they were doing in that last year. Were they like hitting it hard in 2001 or were they kind of right. like not doing a lot? And then after almost a year of not doing a lot, they were like, Hey, we're not doing a lot. Let's just officially not be doing anything. I don't sure. know. Sure. So, but you know, definitely like you're saying vocally a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I, any of it. Vocally a hundred percent. Like it's there, but that's why I felt so strongly about it that I wanted to make it my number two. Cause like I said, I wanted to subvert expectation here and I just really felt like Chad would just, would just crush it. Really. You could swap Greg and Chad could kind of be interchangeable in their places. So all my guys so far, like again, uh, Evil Presley and Nick Thirteen could easily probably be interswap between uh, four and five, and Chad and Greg could probably be uh, swap between two and three if you really wanted to. And their um, last studio album was two thousand, so they weren't working it? on new material. Yeah, uh, so they definitely they problematic they definitely was released in two thousand, so they weren't album. working on new material for sure. Could have happened. Totally could have yeah. happened. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. That's why I wanted to look because I thought maybe they would have been very active at the time, but it appears not. So that makes it even a yeah. better pick. <laughs> Joe says, yeah, I couldn't believe you had a chick on last night. That was definitely the first time a lot of your <laughs> viewers saw a woman. Come <laughs> on, Joe. A lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of my viewers, uh, I do have quite a few uh, female viewers and you know, well, oh my God, I almost just ended the stream by accident. That would have sucked. <laughs> um, but you know what? Like we have, we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of female viewers and we don't have enough female guests and it's just not, it's not right. I want more, to have more female guests. Um, so I was really glad to have Erin on, who's such a cool chick. She was just really, it was really nice to talk to her. Yeah, it was a great um, show. Yeah. Uh, okay. Kevin says if Chad replaced Greg uh, Graves, could Bill Stevenson replace Chud? Holy hell. I think you just all misfits. All misfits, baby. You have that would work, man. Chad replacing Graves and Bill Stevenson replacing Chud. That is that is fire right there. Because we talk all the time about Bill Stevenson uh getting behind the kit. But that you just you just put two and two together to make four. Okay. There you go. There. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Yes. So that would be my alt. That would be the the full lineup. We should have, imagine if we tried to include drummers, then we would have, we would be here till like five in the yeah, morning. Right? But yeah. So Bill Stevenson would replace Chud. I did. I did think about that as a like I didn't consider it, but while I was thinking about people, like if there was a drummer that that vocalist was associated with i was like oh that's even better because maybe that guy comes with them you know all fits um, angus has it angus nailed it ready all fits that's what it would be holy crap i you know i just realized something that totally makes sense but i i don't think he's on your list he's not on my list we'll we'll, we'll, we'll circle back around to it i don't want to i don't want to bring attention don't want to bring attention to it right there oh look at that Finn, he's I'm being compared to Finn McKinty. That is too kind. I, you know, I just did some work for Finn McKinty. Actually, I I, I I edited some reels for him uh, very recently, and I told him when I spoke to him, I was like, "Dude, like, I, I love your channel, and like, I I really, I, I don't know, I, I take a lot of notes, man. I think I think you're great." Um. Okay, no reason to discuss drummers. I should be playing drums for the minute. Okay, so because Eric Eric is the one that should be He's got it covered. <laughs> Eric has it covered. So really Eric would be let's put Eric with every lineup we've we've talked about with every frontman. Eric is the de facto drummer. Okay. We're not we're not even gonna discuss drummers for that reason. So that that's funny. Okay. All right, let's uh let let's keep let's keep rolling here. I'm gonna I'm gonna collapse this. 
And we're now up to our number ones, man. We're up to our. Can you believe I almost I almost xed out our our session by just now? First time that would have happened. That would we should just x it out now and be like no yeah, number one. So. <laughs> that would have been so bad, dude. That would have been so friggin' bad. Oh my god! All right, are we ready for the number? I'm very excited. One? The name number one. Oh, wait, wait, real quick. J JS says he's been listening to Abby Ooze. That's awesome. Guys, everybody go listen to Abby Ooze. Go search her out on YouTube. She rules. James. And we have another. James is, man, James with the friggin' contributions. Thank you, James. James says, my cats, Lucy and Mina, say, hey, sorry, I'm drunk, but it's $5. Thank you. Glad I'm awake to hang out. Love you guys. Miss you, brother. Jeff, too. Dude, you're, you're, thank you. And I'm glad, glad to have you here. And, um, that's, yes, that's, that's really funny. Yes, James, James goes to sleep early sometimes, but he is, he's staying up for this one, which, which, which works. Yes, he's, <laughs> he's making him throw down. Um, okay, we're doing number ones. Let's go. Let's keep going. I got some really yep. cool thumbnails. Thank you. Everybody go listen to Abby Ooze. She rules. She is, I, I love Abby Ooze. And if I could, if she was, if she, if we could track her down, I would absolutely have her on the show to talk to her about her music. Okay, we're going back to the thing. Here it is. Here it is. There we go. Okay, okay. my number one pick for the Misfit singer after Graves left. In 2000, 2001, um, I'm really excited. However, it's a little bit less exciting. Go ahead and pull it up. Okay. Um, Ready? But, yep. But uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff did put him on his list already. I didn't say anything when he did. But my number one pick for the Misfit singer in 2000, 2001 after Graves and Chud left would have been evil from the independents. Um, like we've been talking about the whole time, you know, he, he looks cooler uh, in this photo than the one that he I showed. had been, he had been doing the, the independents since 92. So he had eight, nine years um, of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the independents did some touring with, the, with the Misfits. Um, obviously, as we talked about, it was managed by Joey. Um, they recorded some albums with Daniel Ray. Right. Um, I forgot and, that. And, yeah. So they had worked with Daniel Ray. Um, and I think his vocal range and, you know, everyone's heard him do the independence, which is amazing vocal work, of course. Yeah. But but his vocal range is, you know, I, he's doing the independence. So like when you hear him sing, he's doing the independence. This vocal range is, is 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 way beyond that, <laughs> um, and style wise is way beyond what you hear him do at the independence. So for him to do Glenn or Michael stuff, like I have no doubt, um, would he be a clone of that? No, but I I think most of us wouldn't want that anyway. Right. I think a lot of it he could elevate, and I I know he could handle any of it. Uh -huh. So plenty of experience. But another big thing that put him up at the top of my list is like he's a true horror punk rocker, he loved, which a lot yes. of these other people I put on. Yes. Like, some of them were, but some of them weren't. Um, certainly a songwriting asset, um, which again was something I factored into it because if we were going to have a new Misfit singer, I wanted, I want new music, you know? I sure. want new music. Sure. And we didn't get, we didn't get a lot of that after graves left you know um so that was certainly an important part to me and, and i know that he can do that but you know and not just like a, a horror punk person but like a misfits historian fought like you were saying like you know you pulled up a picture of him with with glenn and jerry when they were doing christ the conquer like who goes and ha who goes and meets with glenn and jerry while they're doing christ the conquer like someone that really is into the misfits. He so. would have given, he would have given it his all. And you know, but here's the thing. Here's the flip side of that. He was he is so dedicated. I mean, those guys love their band and they've been doing their band forever. And so while he would do it, I don't think that he would have 
permanently. It would he would have always it would have always been it wouldn't have taken up full his full time because he always would have made time for the independence too. That that's just my two cents on the issue on the, on the matter. Yeah, I mean, I could agree with that, but you know, um, so I don't know. Definitely, 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 definitely a valid point. But I just think when I compared everything else, kind of when I put together my list and compared him to the other people I put on it, um, just comparing all those different categories of like longevity, new music, sure, the ability to do the old stuff, do the Glenn stuff, do the Grave stuff, do new stuff. Um, and, and be part of, be truly part of like the community and the fans that are coming to the show. Like he would be part of that. The fans would be accepting of him. He would be accepting of the fans. He would understand the fans, all that stuff combined. He made the top of my list. I'm glad he made your list too. And here's the thing. He's the first person out of everything that we've done so far that was on both of our lists. And so... That means something, something too. That, that means something. something too. So that's a big deal. That that definitely means something. And um, yeah, dude, it would have been definitely would be interesting. Now that we've gotten your all of your picks out of the way, I'm gonna. I know this is not one of my picks, so I can officially address Henry Rollins. And I mm. see, I've seen Henry Rollins. Godless has uh, put up Henry Rollins several times. And mm -hmm. you want to know something like? Like for a novelty, like it would be interesting to see Henry Rollins get up and like you know do like a small set. I don't think it would ever work out with Henry Rollins and Glenn and Jerry. It would just be it would just be too it would be too insane. It, it, I mean, it would be too insane for Henry. He wouldn't. I don't think he would deal with it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work out. I, I just don't think those guys could do it. Also, now we can finally Jody Ramon is mentioning. The guy from AFI, um, son of Sam, would be a personal choice. That's uh, Davey Havoc. I didn't put Davey Havoc on specifically because he sang for Son of Sam, and I just didn't think. I don't. I'll be honest. I'm not a big. I, I, yeah. What are you gonna say? What, what are you gonna play? Davey Havoc's on my alternate list. He's actually the the top one that I ended up having. Whoa, the cut. All right. I, so tell us why. I kind ahead. of didn't want to, and I did a lot of research on this. Yeah. So. David Havoc, AFI, they put out the All Hallows EP in 99. Mm -hmm. um, and then they put out the very inspired Misfits album, The Art of Drowning, right okay. after that. Um, so here's where it got tough. David Havoc did Son of Sam. Son of Sam put right. out their album, like, right after the Misfits would have needed a new singer. So, like, when, if they put out the album in 2001, when did Davey Havoc commit to doing the project because if Davey Havoc commits to doing Son of Sam, if Jerry says, Hey, do you want to do the band? He's going to, he says no, because he's already signed on to do Son of Sam. It has to be no. So like right. if I knew the exact date that Davey Havoc signs on to do the Son of Sam project. And I knew the exact date that Jerry reaches out to him and asks him if he would want to do it and that date is earlier than the son of Sam thing, then I can, then I can entertain the possibility. I, I think a guy like Davey Havoc, if, if anyone could, could juggle the two bands, I, I do think AFI rose to fame that maybe you couldn't handle both, but maybe they could have put out like an album. Um, but anyway, the, the son of Sam date timeline cut it so close to me that I was like, I would think he had already committed to do Son of Sam by the time the Misfits would have asked him to be the singer. So I had to take him off. So, you know, part of my problem with Davey Havoc, and it's like, this is the bias. The bias is that I am not very partial to Davey Havoc's vocals. It's never, even on the Son of Sam stuff, I always sort of was just like, I just, just never were. I love that album, but those mm -hmm. vocals never worked for me ever. In fact, you know, I've and I've told this to I've told this to Steve Zing many times. I always said, you know, if you ever do another Son of Sam album, you should be the singer. It should just be you. You could sing though. I mean, you would be you. You are a good singer. You should just do the singing. I mean, not that like Davey Havoc would be involved by that point anyway. But the point, my point being, is that 
That's always like, uh, I don't know. I just, I've never been, I've never really clicked with AFI. So that was not, it was very much in the background. And in terms of for, for Misfit stuff, I know they've covered Misfit songs. I like the Halloween cover that he does is pretty great. They do is pretty great. Uh, I, I would, I, of all the Misfits material, I would be very interested to hear how he would do the Graves material. I think he could probably do that justice even more than say the, I think he'd be better on the Graves stuff than the Danzig stuff, yeah. but yeah, you're right. It would I mean, be interesting. It, it would be it's interesting. a far, it's a far throw from some of the, some of it, but then you have to look at the plus side of like, you know, what could have they done to move forward with new material that was like, um, you know, something new, but still worked, you know, like, I think there's some benefit there, but I also agree with you too. I mean, it's, it, it's a vocal style that's out of the norm enough that, you know, I mean, like Axl Rose, some people say he's like the best singer around and then other people hate it because it's so far off. And yeah. I, I, I Axl Rose is another Davey one. Havoc, does. Yeah. But Davey it's Havoc has a unique voice. So I think a lot of people really like it, but I think a lot of people really don't like it. So I can see why you would say that. And I like it for, for listen, for AFI, for AFI songs, it's fine. But I just, it doesn't work. It didn't work for me for that Son of Sam stuff. And it wouldn't work for me for maybe say, I don't know. Wouldn't, I don't know if it would work for me with, with the misfits. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. Uh, JS keeps bringing up Bobby Seale. The problem with Bobby Seale is first of all, I don't think of Bobby Steele as a singer, even though I know he sings and he's a very good front man for what he does. But Bobby Steele is a friggin' guitar slinger. That's what Bob, Bobby Steele is a guitar player. He's the best guitar player Misfits ever had. I mean, really good guitar player, right? Or at least one of the best guitar players Misfits ever had. And um, so I don't, and then the, lastly, he, him and Jerry do not get along. So. That would just that would never work. And here's Joe with some more snarky comments. Uh, psh, no one is gonna say no to the Misfits dig because they're in Son of Sam. Get the f out of here. Davy didn't do Son of Sam because of AFI. I don't know, man. I I just I, I do believe he was offered the gig, as you said, as you mentioned. I I asked uh, Tank about that. And he, I forgot what his response was, but he didn't seem to uh, too certain about the the whole situation. Evil cop. Well, I got to get to my final pick here before we start going into BS in here. Evil complimented my busted nose once. He asks, "Is that real blood?" Um, no. Robbie Bloodshed could not. Robbie Bloodshed does not qualify for the list because Robbie Bloodshed was born in 1997, I think, or 98, one of those year, late 90s years. And part of the criteria for our, our lists here was that it had to be someone contemporary of the time. So there are a lot of people that do not qualify. Oh my God, there is a lot of comments. Hold on, All right, I got. I'm getting overwhelmed here. All right, let me go get to my number one. <laughs> Here's my number one pick, everybody. Um, this was, this popped out to me. It came to me like an epiphany. And suddenly, this is, in my opinion, the perfect representation of everything we've been talking about tonight. The look, the knowing, having a fundamental understanding about who the new misfits are. Um, coming from both a punk background that also clashes with metal, which is perfect for Jerry's Misfits, right? Um, totally has the build, totally is into th the theatrics of the Misfits, to uh, even uh, opened for the Misfits as well as Sam Hain back in the day. So this guy has played with Glenn. I don't know well. who you're gonna say. Yeah, it's it's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be a surprising one. Um, this guy has vocal chops. This guy can sing, and he could definitely sing the misfit material. He is a misfits fan, or he does appreciate and respect the misfits, but also has a melodic quality to his voice where he would do very interesting things with the Graves material. 
He also weight lifts and would easily go pound to pound lifting weights with both Jerry and Doyle. In other words, this guy, and he was a front man, this guy, in other words, is the perfect fit. His band that used to play with the Misfits back in the 80s, played like once or twice, uh, came back for, to, to reunite for one more record around the time of Graves and Chud walking off. And he was not, you know, while doing, he wasn't doing music full time in the way that maybe the Misfits were, which would, I would imagine, leave his schedule more open and accommodating to a Misfits touring schedule. He, in my opinion, is the number one perfect front man to continue that sort of tradition. Everybody else ticks some boxes, but do they tick every box? No. I think this guy ticks every single box. He's also roughly their age. So he fits the age bracket. I mean, he literally ticks every single box. Do you still not know who I'm talking about? I, I, man, I have a, I have a list over here. <laughs> of other people. And I thought of, I thought about tons of other people. And even when you talked about evil, like it, you got a sentence into it. And I'm, I knew you were going to say evil. I have no, I don't even have a, I don't even have a guess. Does anybody else, before I reveal my number one pick, does anybody else want to take a stab from all of the hints that, that I just mentioned? We have a bunch of, we have 43 people watching on YouTube alone. Does anybody know who I am talking about from my description? Anybody want to take a guess? Steve Zing, that would be a good guess. And Steve Zing is in my runner ups. I put Steve Zing in there, but. I don't, Steve Zing would not, it wouldn't, I don't think it would work with the, uh, with Jerry's Misfits ultimately for a lot of reasons, especially as he had already done, done Sam Hain. Does anybody else, is anybody else going to uh, guess who it is? Going once, going twice. Harley Flanagan? No, what's no Harley initials? Flanagan. What's the initials? The initials of the guy? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of giving it away a little bit. The nope. first initial. It's not, it's not Peter Steele. It is not the first, Harley Flanagan. The first initial. The first name, first the initial. first initial. Uh, it's an L. Okay, it's not the person I <laughs> a little bit thought maybe. but <laughs> Nope. All right, should I stop teasing it? All right, ready? Yeah, go for you. it. I, right, I have without, no clue. I have no clue. further ado. Without further ado, here is my number one pick to jump in the front man slot when Graves and Chud walk off the tour. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's coming. Boom. Do you know who this guy is? Uh, well, there's four guys, but the guy who's standing closest to the camera the guy, um, the guy in the center, really, of the picture, on the more of the right hand side. Does anybody know who this is? Ding, ding, ding! That is correct, Joe. It is Larry the Wolf from the band The Manimals. Manimals were sort of like a. Uh, they were like a. They were. I mean, they were punk rock, but they were also kind of metal. And they put out an album called Blood is the Harvest. It was more of like an EP. They came back in the year 2000, 2001 with a, with a um, freaking uh, an album called Horrorcore. And uh, I think Larry, Larry's a bass player, just like Jerry is. Larry is almost like the alter ego of Jerry only. Like they are two sides of the same coin. And I just think they would get along so well uh and you know doyle would work perfectly and that dynamic especially because larry is into punk and he's into like sort of like the metal thing that doyle does on his guitar it just would have tracked so well he really truly he he hits every single factor we mentioned the time period the look the ability to tour the ability uh he can sing. He can be a front man. 
freaking Larry the Wolf, dude. And it makes perfect sense. He calls himself Larry the Wolf. They're the band of animals. He wears a giant fur rug on his back because he's like part animal. He would have been, and you literally could have had him. He wouldn't have had to change anything. Wouldn't have even had to get a devil lock. You could have just had him be Larry the Wolf, and it would have friggin' worked. <coughs> so, I, are you familiar with the manuals? Do you know? Or I am, them? but not, but not enough to. Um, I definitely want to go explore it more under that light for sure. Just go listen to uh, "Burn Witch Burn," yeah, uh, which is a track off of. I think it's actually on both. It's on. They re-recorded it for horrorcore, but it's it was also on. Um, it was also on "Blood Is the Harvest," and you can really imagine. You can truly imagine Larry singing for. And that Jerry's was the thing, like bits. like I was talking about, like some of these people, I Thank I you, think about someone and. and and think yeah, like yeah. someone that I thought was good and I'd imagine it and be like, oh, that's not good. And then other people um, that kind of came to me, I would go re-listen to it as, mm. you know, as the, so I've heard them before, but I, I didn't investigate that during this. So I never listened to them as that possibility. So I need to do that. that yeah. Go listen to everybody. Go listen to Burn Witch Burn. Yeah, by the manimals on YouTube, and and you will hear exactly what I'm imagining. You know, him taking over with the misfits and just or Jerry's misfits, whatever you want to call it. In that world, they never record Project 1950. They write a brand new album that's a little bit that's maybe even more metal than the previous stuff that they had done. And they they go into a renaissance, man. And I got to be honest with you, I want to imagine maybe even more like the lineup is so successful that maybe it, it might even prevent, it prevents Jerry doesn't, maybe Jerry never reunites with Glenn because he's just so happy with this, this Doyle. How about this? Maybe he reunites with Glenn down the road, but I, I'll tell you this much. I bet Doyle doesn't leave, right? Doyle is like stoked with their new front man. It works, man. He he really friggin' clicks, works, tracks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh uh big boofa to tofu. Uh I'm really glad this is the first live show. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um let's talk a little bit about our runner ups. I, as I mentioned, I had Steve Zing on my runner ups, and I also had Mike Hideous as a runner-up. And I had one more, I had one more on my list, actually. Um, but I didn't think I don't think that it would have worked out because it had previously you had Mike Hideous and who yeah. who? Mike I Hideous. Mike and who? Hideous and I had I had Mike Hideous, I had Steve Zing. And I know, and the reason why they didn't make the list is because I explained why Mike Hideous, but Steve Zing was, Steve Zing had reunited in Sam Hain, and he just would not have, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't, he just wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have been into it at all. I don't think, I don't think he would, he would, he wouldn't have taken that gig. Um, I, my last, the last one, good night, James. And thank you so much, James, for, for all your support tonight. It's great having you in the chat. Great to great to have your presence here. Um the, the the last one is based on the fact that these guys opened for the misfits in a whole bunch. The fact that I would imagine Jerry grabbing him, you know, grabbing him by the shirt collar, being like, hey. You want to come and sing for us? We need a singer. Like, just grabbing him real quick. That sort of thing. Uh, he hadn't really worked out in in the infrastructure that he had previously been involved in. He did have a band, a horror punk band. Um, and I just would have, could totally imagine Jerry sort of plopping him in there, especially because he used to wear a T-shirt, or he used to wear a shirt that said not Michael Graves. And the person I'm thinking of is the late I know it is. 
the late, great Jason Trioxin. I think Jason Trioxin, I'm not saying it would have worked out, but I could totally see Jerry and Doyle like scrambling for somebody and and picking out Jason and Jason, you know, doing finishing a tour with with the misfits sort of jumping in as like, you know, a, a Michael Graves type sort of avatar and doing it. And he would have done a good job. Probably would have done a good job. Probably wouldn't have lasted. You know, it didn't last the first time. He was he was Doyle's guitar tech and it didn't work out for a bunch of reasons. But in a, in a world where, you know, Jerry and Doyle, who hadn't played with Joey Image in forever, were like, you know, I mean, Joey Image had like, you know, sort of some, some bad blood had gone down between Joey Image and Jerry only in the past. And yet there they are, you know, picking them up and putting them on a drum stool. I could see, I could totally see Jerry being like, hey, look up that kid from Bergen, wherever. I don't know where Jason used to live in Bergen County. Look up that kid and and have him uh, sing for us. He could sing for us. Because he's not going to go back to Mike Hideous. He's not going to go to Michael Graves. He's like, oh, yeah, they opened up. Because I know Mr. Monster opened up for the Misfits a couple times, once or twice. Could have worked. Could have worked, mm -hmm. I think. So that was my third. That was my third runner-up when I was doing all my considerations. And I'm all tapped out. So give me yours. Let's hear it. Yeah, so my I, I have a little bit longer of a list for runners up, and some of them are, are a lot further from you know anyone that would have made the list. But I I still kept them on here just you know sure to mention because they were people that I at least felt the need to write down. Um, so we did we did go over the one Davy Havoc. Um, we talked about the Son of Sam stuff. Um, Wednesday 13, um, Wednesday 13, when that happened, Wednesday 13 was basically in a, a regional band, uh, in North Carolina doing, doing like horror themed stuff. Huh. Um, and you know, when we talk about wanting new misfits music since 2001, Wednesday 13 has probably put out like. 10 or more albums worth of material. So, you know, if you, if we think about it in a way of like wanting more misfit songs, the guy cranked out, I think more material than anyone else on the list that we've named. Right. He's the most prolific. Uh, and, and, and clearly has <clears throat> all been like, it, 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 he's all in on horror. Like, it's not like he's jumped around to different stuff. I mean, it's his whole thing. It, it, he's been that way since the get go. Um, so Wednesday 13 for sure. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, so I don't know too much about Wednesday 13. I know, like I know of him. I don't know too much about him. Thank you. By the way, thank you for everybody. Thank you for, for watching uh, uh, we have people leaving, having to, having to go running late and whatnot, but yes, thank you. And thank you. I'm glad you thought it was a great show. Yeah. I'm not, I'm just not too, I'm not too familiar with his music, but I could imagine him fitting the part again, Again, it's like it's like at that point you're kind of, you know, Jerry is like, you know, needs somebody. He needs someone to jump in into the spot. And yeah, I mean, if if you want to explore him as an option, like the closest thing yeah. was, you know, Wednesday thirteen was doing stuff in North Carolina and then got catapulted into Murder Dolls, like mm -hmm. kind of right after that time, which was signed to a major label, and he was working with, you know you know, a major label, big recording stuff. So you go listen to that and, you know, it's a little bit geared towards metal, but definitely punk influenced. And you can kind of hear what he was doing uh -huh. at the time. And again, it, does it sound like the misfits? No, but it, you listen to it and think about him working with the misfits and it makes sense to me, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. How, how would he do sing? How would he do singing the, some of the old, like, the Glenn and, and Michael stuff, like, you know, some of it really good. Some of it, I don't, may, maybe not like I, I, he could do it. I mean, Jerry does the songs live, so I know he <laughs> could do them. I know he could do them live and they could play the shows, but, um, you know, some stuff to think about. I think more of it too, it, 
to me that kind of put him lower on my list was, I mean, this guy's all in on horror. Like he's a dark dude, I think. Oh, and so okay. I don't know. I, I, <clears throat> I think that their, the relationships wouldn't have worked is, was more a huge reason I put him down my list. Um, but um, anyway, I'm, I'm on there song songwriting wise and contribution to that and being all in on horror. Definitely. You know, it's funny. A lot of people mentioned Dave Vanian in the comments, and obviously he would have been an obvious choice to put on this list. And, you know, I'm the reason why I left him off is because, A, he, uh, again, he wasn't going to lift weights. And I know that sounds like a weak reason. It's not my only reason. But it's just like, again, when you're thinking about, we have to think about all of the factors that would make someone a good pick or work for the work in the spot and what whatnot. Um, but I honestly just don't think, you know, Dave Vaney and singing for Jerry and Doyle would, would work. It just wouldn't click. It would be like, you know, Dave, I don't know, Dave is kind of elegant in a way that doesn't really work for that kind of material, if that makes any sense. We got Count Zakula is in the house. What's up, Zach? How are you, sir? Yeah, I can agree. And I also didn't, I, I pretty much took him off my list, like, in the first second, because that got explored so strongly. Right. And so it's very overplayed out, like Peter Steele, like, you know. Yeah, it's just, that was yeah. never going to happen. So, like, why would I even bother delving into that, you know? He just, I don't know. I, I just, like, again, and I love Dave Vanian. I think he's, inc- I mean, he's freaking Dave Vanian, freaking damned. I mean, of course, it's phenomenal. But, like. You know, again, like I try to imagine Dave Vanian sort of I, I can't I'll be honest, I, I cannot really imagine Dave Vanian singing certain misfits tunes. Like I know that sounds really right. weird to say, but like you know, a, like there's stuff on Walk Among Us and Earth A D. Static Age yeah. for sure. Static Age, I could see Dave Vanian do. I could see Dave Vanian doing a horror business stuff, but like I, I couldn't see I couldn't see Dave Vanian trying to sing like Earth AD. I don't know, it would just be weird. I mean it would be cool. I'd like to hear it, but yeah, I, like I, I just don't mommy. see him. Like what would that yeah, be? Yeah, like? him doing mommy. Actually, I don't know. Maybe he could do mommy. I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I'm sure he could do Maybe. any of it, but like would it be, you know? It would just be it would be a weird fit. And then the grave yeah. stuff would be kind of interesting because you know, I think about a song like uh Blacklight. I would love to hear Dave Vanian. As a matter of fact, Dave yeah. Vanian, like, w- you know, a damned version of Blacklight would actually be really rad. Like, that would work uh, from mm-hmm. American Psycho. Or, like, you know, uh, from Hell They Came. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's a great... Or Speak of the Devil. I could hear Dave Vanian doing those songs. But I just don't yeah, see American Dave American Psycho Vanian. stuff, for sure. You know, ultimately... Ultimately, what happens is like when you look at like J- like when you look at Des and Marky Ramon playing with Jerry, they don't look like a band in that in that kind of sense. <laughs> James came back; he was he didn't actually go to sleep, and he came yeah. back with Corey Feldman. JS says Butch Patrick. Okay, we're getting really really silly here now. <laughs> the new singer, the new singer of the Misfits, Zach says Count Zacula says. The new singer of the Misfits should have just been the Crimson Ghost. Guy hasn't worked since the 40s. Why not? <laughs> hey, I'm down. That's good. That makes sense. And then you don't have to worry. It's like Ghost, right? You know, Ghosty is like interchangeable guys. They just have like an interchangeable. Oh, my God. Okay, this is my favorite entry so far. This deserves an award from JS. Tim Curry. Tim Curry singing for the Misfits as Dr. Frankenfooter. With that voice, could you just imagine? Die, 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 my die. I can't even do it, Tim Curry. I can't. I wish, I wish I could do that sort of like London house mouse accent. But uh, yeah, Tim Curry is Doctor Frankenfooter singing Misfit songs. That's a sight a sight to behold. Um. Did you, did you, are there, is there anybody else on your list that you have not at least name dropped? Yeah. Well, the next person on my list is Jason Troxen, which you named. 
But okay. Oh, so you also out. had Jason on there. Okay. I did. Yeah. Um, he was the next person on my alternate cool. list, which again, both on our alternate list, but actually looking back over our list, only the second person that made both of our lists, whether on our list or on the alternate list. So That's again, something, something to be said for that, for sure. Was, yeah, you know. Debbie Harry. So Blondie did cover Hollywood Babylon, and it is they kind did. of crazy that they did such a good job with it too. It's kind of mind boggling to think that Blondie would cover Hollywood Babylon, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess there is kind of like you could imagine them. Like, it's like if going back, Zach, before you got here, we were talking about um, the idea of a female front woman, and maybe Debbie Harry from Blondie. At least for some of that static age stuff. I don't mean I can't see Deb Deborah Harry singing Debbie Harry singing um like you know Hellhound or <laughs> like Wolf's Blood. You know. <laughs> oh man, Uncle Joey, of course. Uh who else you got? Who else you got? Adam says Andrew Dice Clay. Okay, you guys are just getting really silly with it now. I have uh I have one for Kevin that made my alternate list, Andrew WK. Oh yeah, that was Kevin. I forgot to mention. I didn't want it to. Was say, Kevin, that was Kevin, and I, I did have him on my Good list, pick. and I looked into Good what pick. he was doing at that time, and like solid. As far as what he was doing, it would have worked. I didn't find a whole lot of evidence of him being into that stuff. Do I think he could do it? Yes. Do I think he, he would have had? Do I think he would have had interest or followed that band from the evidence that I could find? He didn't. Um, but he's certainly a fitness guy, so we know they like that. So that part works. Yeah, um, so, that, so there's parts of it. That, there's WK parts of it that work. There's parts of it that yeah, work. Right, parts of it that um, work. Again, I, 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 from my own opinion, this is just my personal opinion. Across your list and across my list, I still stand by this. I still stand by this. The only person that ticks every single box, in my personal opinion, is still Larry the Wolf. He's the only one. That hits every single box, and it's in their entirety. Nobody else's, but that's why for me, Larry the Wolf is number one. Oh, John Stamos, come on, James. James, James you're drunk. <laughs> James, James has lost his mind. John Stamos, he he plays drums for the Beach Boys. It wouldn't, it would never work. It would never work out. They wouldn't be able, actually. We'd have John Stamos on drums. Sorry, Eric, you've been usurped uh by John Stamos. I'll go through the rest of these a little bit quicker because yeah, go again, ahead, go ahead. The bottom go of my ahead. alternate list, and I don't even know how many people. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to interrupt you. Sean Sean Sumholm from the band The Deadlines, who put out an MP3 okay. in the early 2000s, around the time that Graves and Shud left the Misfits, called Vampire Love. They put it on Napster and LimeWire, and they listed oh. it as a miss, an unreleased Misfits song. Oh, and really? When it came out. Everyone thought that it was a new Misfits song with a new singer. Oh, because they put it out, which was amazing, smart I, marketing on their part to put it on a music sharing thing and list it as a new misfit song when everyone like didn't know who the new singer was going to be. So I everyone downloaded these it. guys. Yeah. And even if even if you go on YouTube today and put misfits, vampire love videos will come up and there will be just people in the thread saying that's not the misfits. It's the deadlines. Really good song. It has organ in it. But they were like this weird. Like, they were like folk. a horror. They were a horror punk band that was on Tooth and Nail Records, which was kind of like a Christian crossover label. Hmm. Um, but anyway, the, the the guy like is pretty cool. I think it could have sort of worked in some ways. I don't know that he could do like that. You, you can you can go listen to it. The deadlines, I think, like would have sort of worked. Maybe he could have like done new material with them. Um, so I put them on my list. Uh, mostly because of the when I heard the Vampire Love MP3 back with the LimeWire and Napster days, it was kind of like you were listening to it and being like, I don't know, maybe this is the guy that's the new singer. So you were kind of listening to it being like, am I going to accept if this is the new singer of the Misfits? So you kind of listened to it in that way. And I remember being like, no, I can I can get into this. This is cool. Yeah. Um, so he made my list because of that. Um, then these other ones, these are really the the far the further stretches but people that I'd love here do it and that maybe have some ties some way Mike Ness oh um, man Mike Ness wow 
I wow, think about good. Mike Ness. I think I think about Mike Ness singing like "Dig Up Her Bones." I can hear it in my head, and it's like amazing. Um, okay, okay. I I wouldn't think about it like from that perspective. Okay. Yeah, maybe, I can I can maybe. hear him doing it, and it's like it's amazing. It sounds like Mike Ness doing it, but it's good. Okay. Uh, Alice Cooper, which again would be kind of like a tributey Misfits thing, but like would be legendary to have that happen. Um, I you know what the problem would be. Alice Cooper is so big that it would no longer be the Misfits. It would be Jerry and Doyle playing with Alice Cooper. It would be the other sure. way around. I mean, I mean, you're right. It basically would be, but like maybe them, like, I don't know how much of the Misfits just become a tribute act since Graves and Chud left anyway. Well, that's what I was saying before is that, you know, so why not have Marky someone really Ramon. cool sing it? Marky Ramone is the drummer. I mean, it just doesn't, they're so Mitch. You look at those photos. They're so mismatched. Yeah. I mean, everybody's coming from, you know, and, and he's getting Dez. Dez is going along with it. Poor uncle Dez is getting dressed up like, like a weird. Yeah. Like, but the one thing, the one thing that's different about Alice Cooper doing it is Alice Cooper is like, Already he lives fits it. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. He lives. So, it. Jerry would fit in very well with uh, Jerry and Doyle would fit in well with Alice Cooper for sure. But yeah. it would just, again, his, his, his celebrity and his, his legendariness is so eclipsing. It just would be, it would just outshine what they yeah. are. I, I agree. Which is why he's on the very bottom of my alternate list, but still right. someone that popped Fair in enough. my head, like automatically. Um, another one, you dye the bleach blonde hair black D Snyder. You know what's funny? I, He's a, that is fucking hilarious. You know? That is fucking hilarious that you said. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to curse. Um, that is hilarious because D Snyder passed through my mind for a moment. I I didn't even I can't even call it considering because I really didn't consider it. But I absolutely thought of D Snyder, and I was like, I guess that is considering. I was like, huh? I wonder if D Snyder. And then I was like, nah, that wouldn't work. But I, it's funny that we both thought of that. Fine. Mm -hmm. D Snyder. <laughs> Someone says that Davey Havoc absolutely turned down the Misfits saying that he could never fill Danzig's shoes. I've never heard that before. But, um, you know. I, you know that, no, but that, that's, I think that is, I mean, I don't know, but I don't know the particulars, but I think that's kind of like sort of what happened in the sense that like, they, you know, also, you know, the fact that he kind of leans towards the Danzig side of things. And I feel like it would be the same. It's like kind of like the same vibe as if they like, if they ever went to Steve Zing, it was like, hey, Steve, could would you sing, you know, sing for us? And that Steve at that point in time would probably just be like, ah, no, I'm not going to do it. We'll never do it. So I don't know. Um, in the last two of my list, someone did mention it earlier, but um, Brody Dolly. Yeah. Um, what's her name? I'm going to butcher her screen name. It's uh, Wyma, Wyma D. Shout out. She also mentioned uh, Brody, and that would have been good. That would have been did it. Thing. And, uh, you know, again, looking at everything, it was like timeline, time wise, timeline wise. Yeah. You know, she was still with Tim Armstrong, but like things were really, really, really falling apart. So like it might have been a good route out from sure. all of that. So like, but yet the distillers were still doing really, really good too. So I don't know that you leave that, but um, definitely an interesting thought and someone that I think could could do really cool stuff with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then the last one, she, she'd rock a double lock too. Yeah, and then the last one on my list was Jesse Malin from Op Ivy. Oh my goodness! Okay, that is insane. Je Jesse Michaels, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no that that is in that is insane, and like I would love to hear him cover a Misfit song. I could not see him in that role, but I would love to hear him cover a Misfit song. I searched that is so hard. Out of the box. I searched so hard to find him singing a Misfit song somewhere online, live or anywhere. Couldn't find one. I don't think he's a Misfit. I, I don't think he's into well, it. Well, I, I I found an an interview that he did like 
way back where someone actually like asks him specifically about the myth. They asked a bunch of punk rock musicians Thank about you, the JS. misfits. Yeah. And he, um, you know, basically says that they're legendary and that he loves them and all this stuff, but I couldn't find anything of him singing to even get a glimpse of what he sounds like doing that. But dude, that's crazy that he even mentioned that he mentioned. I mean, they asked, about- they asked him about them, but either way, yeah, if you go on the internet, if you type in like Jesse Michaels, the Misfits, you'll find the article. Okay, this kind of deserves its own episode alone. Like, I would love to do, like, a top five of this because this would be interesting. Uh, Count Zacula says, my dream would be to hear the Cramps do a Misfits cover, and that captures my imagination so hard. And, like, I would love to hear... I would love to hear that. And I don't know what the hell they would do. I would imagine the Cramps doing a slowed-down version of Horror Business. Like something, I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe, um, children. Oh, no. The cramps would do children in heat. That's what they would do. That's what I think they would do. I don't know. I have one more thing. Um, yeah. So I know my list was better than yours for the top five misfits replacement singers. (laughs) In the first, the first person in the live chat, that basically says that my list was better than your list. Yeah. They will get a free batch of stickers from Riot Stickers. Oh, did you so, hear that? Guys, did you just hear let's that? See who it is. Let's see who it is. Let's see. Let's see whoever it is. Who, whoever it is. Thank you for joining us, Godless. Let's see. Did someone do it? Cramps would do Come Back. Ema said better better list. list. Uh, she's the winner. Is she All the winner? Right. Yeah, she, says she is. It's a long I, this is what she says. It's pronounced a long Ema Ema my mother named me after a singer Ema Schumach. It's my name. Cool, Ema. Okay. So, yeah, well, that that makes sense. You know, Ema is also Hebrew for uh mother as well mother yeah i would love to see cramps do come back dude oh my god that would be great joe says sharpie's list is better i think emo won it though she did yeah, she was the sure. first one she was the first one there Ema, collect your prize okay james is actually going to bed this time he said that three times. He says, but he's saying this time is cat calls. Ooh, this was a two and a half hour long episode. I did not. Of course that was going to happen. How would that not happen? So Ema. All right. So real quick, Ema D, if you're here, if you email Sharpie at orders at riotstickers.com, you have won some free stickers. Very, very nice there you have of you. It. Wonderful. That was really great. That and, was cool. And Jeff, Tally, like I, I don't think I'm able to go back through the live chat far enough to see all of the oh my uh, God. donations I don't, on the show. Bro, but, I don't even know if I can keep track. It was a lot to it was yeah, a good episode. You, yeah, but you should be able to look to see what came in, however you right. get them to come in. Add it right. up and let me know. Because like I'm saying, I do want I'm let me know what the total is because I'm okay. going to send you that. Too. That's very nice. Thank you. And don't yeah. cheat me out. I want to <laughs> send the full thing. So, um, Okay. So listen, make sure you send your order to make sure you send your email to order Ema. Make sure you send an order to orders at riotstickers.com. Um, big, big Bufa. Thank you again for, for joining us. Um, I just want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. It's just a really, this was a really fun episode. This was, again, if you missed it at the beginning, this was Sharpie's idea. He came up with this episode. I never would have thought to do this, you know, and again, believe me, we love to beat a dead horse around here. We, we try to, we, 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 <laughs> we scrape the bottom of the bottom of the barrel and who knew that something so inconsequential is actually, was actually 
such a meal of a topic and that I, I tip my tip my hat sharpie riot let's let's plug one more time since we're, we're reached the end um angus says i love jeff's long episodes i know it can be a burden you know what? it's gotta it's sometimes you just gotta do it you just gotta do long long, long ass show remember riotstickers.com you can get your stick you get a thousand stickers uh for 79 dollars that's seven cents per sticker people the link is in the description riotstickers.com backslash from us you can't go wrong these stickers they've got a uv coating they have vinyl they're, they're printed on vinyl and they are rated to last four to five years uh which is twice as long as your leading average competitor sticker so keep that in mind John says an alternate pick would have been Mel Gibson. Only, okay, John, that's only if Mel Gibson was playing Mad Max. If it was Man Without a Face Mel Gibson, if it was Braveheart Mel Gibson, and if it was Lethal Weapon Mel Gibson, no way, Jose. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Odorous would have worked. Sure. That would have been funny. That would have been fun. Jerry, I feel like Jerry would get so annoyed. They used to play shows together. I feel like Jerry would get so annoyed with Odorous. He'd just be like, after a while, it just it wouldn't it would not work out. Um, JV could have done it later, man. Right? Yeah, JV not throw not, not in two thousand, which is why I, I, he's what didn't come up on my list at all. But a few years after that, I certainly would put him on my list. There um, you go. There you go. Did um. I was trying to think. There was there was one other there was one other name, and it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember it now. Uh, you know, it's late. It's late. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. Listen, I want to uh, let's wrap this up. I want to thank Sharpie so much for giving us such a great topic to make a meal out of. We love having him here on the show. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Uh, I loved all the, uh, thank you for everybody for all of your comments. And, and I know we didn't get to go get to every single one of them, but you know, it's just so, I love it when people are chatting as we're discussing, it just makes, it enriches everything. It makes it great. Um, what else can I say? I, I can't. I it was awesome, dude. Thanks for having me. Like I, had, I, I was so like stoked to do this. I was like waiting all week at, <laughs> I knew it'd be so fun and it was. It was exactly like it was as much fun as I thought it would be. And yeah, That's we had lot. we had a <laughs> lot of uh commentary, which I was hoping for, and we did. Yeah. And, yeah it was pretty uh, I, but I appreciate all one. you do. Like thank you. Your shows are Thanks. awesome. Thank you. I I don't watch I, I don't watch I don't watch or listen to a lot of podcasts, but yours I always do. And, uh, that, um, that's that what, means that's a lot. what brought me that's what brought me here in the first place. Um, and yeah, I'm glad hey. to be part of the to the show and Absolutely, help sponsor dude. and all that stuff. So I appreciate it. We are honored to have you here. So listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna play us out. Well, Sharpie will be back. This is not the last time you see Sharpie. You'll definitely be back in the future. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. We're gonna say peace, hair grease. Um, Sharpie, hang out for one second. I'm gonna play the little Patreon spiel. Um, since we haven't done that in a while at the end, so do Patreon for everybody. Check out Patreon. See you next week. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff. So I've decided to make a Patreon. What is Patreon? I don't know how to define a Patreon. Let me look it up. Patreon is a membership platform that makes it very easy for creators to get paid for the things that they're already creating. I want to do it full time. I want this to be my full time job. In my efforts to make that happen, I've set up this platform. Is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? I don't know, but I would rather try and crash and burn than not try at all. The goal is to create enough passive revenue so that I can continue to do this full time, uninterrupted. Why? Because I love to do this. I love creating content. I love making videos. I love shooting films. I love doing podcasts. In case you couldn't tell, I love to talk and I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> so right now I've kept the Patreon incredibly simple. There's two tiers and that may change in the future. The Murdergram is a simple way to extend support for all of the hours and hours of free content on the channel for nothing more than a dollar. 
38 cents goes to Patreon. What's a buck 38, eh? It's less than a cup of coffee. But it's a great way that you can show support for very little effort. When you divide that dollar 38 by the hours and hours and hours of time spent listening to this endless drivel of content, the dollar cost average works out. Next up is the YouTube casualty for $6.66. The YouTube casualty is loaded to the gills. Enjoy the archive ad-free as well as ad-free early access to special docu-style podcast videos, music reaction commentaries, and the like a month before they drop on YouTube, loaded with ads, I might add. You're also going to get exclusive content and behind-the-scenes content that is not available on YouTube or anywhere else. So you get to peek behind the veil. And believe me, there's a couple of choice pieces. Most of all, more than anything, whether you join the Patreon or not, I just want to thank each and every one of you that comes to the channel, that watches all the shows, that leaves comments, that participates that subscribes, that's really the most important thing. This is just trying to find a way to earn a living as an artist. And with that, thank you for my TED Talk. Join the Patreon, because we need you! 66 cents.